So now we are online. We will wait for two more minutes so that all the participants can join us. Uh, then we will start. Many are there already. Pritam Rudrapal, Jahan Urang, Gaurav Das Roy, Sumita Nath. Many participants joined. Uh, let the number increase. So, with your permission, should we start, sir, and madam? Convena, sir. Yeah, yeah. Doctor Manik Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, a very good morning to all of you. I, Doctor Ankan Sinha, on behalf of entire organizing team and my personal behalf, would like to welcome you all in this mega event of National Wave Conference on Science and Technology for Sustainable Development with Women Empowerment. <laughs> In this particular day, we have with us uh, Professor Dr. Vijay Lakshmi Saxena, General President of ISCA. We have with us in the form of Chief Guest Come Inaugurator. We have with us uh, the Guest of Honor, Sri Saju Vahid, Director of higher education trip government of Tripura. We have with us a very special guest in the form of Professor Dr. Ashok Kumar Saxena, sir. We have two more special guests with us, Dr. Manoj Kumar Chakraborty, sir, and Dr. Uh, Mrs. Nivedita Chakraborty, madam. Along with us, we have having with us the president of this program, Sri Gautam Das, sir, Principal Government Degree College. We have with us the convener of this program, Dr. Manik Bhattacharji, sir, and the organizing secretary, Dr. Suman Odhikari, sir. So we welcome you all, all the participants who have joined us from different corners of India and even from abroad. So I welcome you all. Now, without any delay, I would like to call upon Dr. Manik Bhattacharji, sir, convener Iska Dharmanagar chapter to give the, his welcome address. Please, sir. Uh, very good morning to all. A respected president of this national web conference, Sri Gautam Das, sir, principal government degree college Dharmanagar, respected chief guest and general president Indian Science Congress Association, Professor Dr. Vijay Lukmi Saxena, Madam, respected guest of honor, Sri Saju Vaid, Sir, Director, Department of Higher Education, Government of Tripura, respected special guest and past general president, Indian Science Congress Association, Professor Dr. Ashok Kumar Saxena, Sir, respected special guest and past ISCA president, Dr. Monoj Kumar Chakravarti Shah, a respected special guest of ISCA executive member and ma'am, Dr. Nivedita Chakravarti ma'am, and all invited speakers, all ISCA chapter conveners and other executive members and all other dignitaries and all participants. On behalf of all member of ISCA Dharmanagar chapter, I do welcome all of you in the occasion of today's national web conference on science and technology for sustainable development with
women empowerment organized by iska dharmanagar chapter department of chemistry and department of physical education government duty college dharmanagar nat tripura we know science and technology is the most important means for empowering the poor in order to appreciate the role of science and technology in the process of development it is necessary to understand that science and technology is the means of enhancing productivity and the physical and mental capabilities of human being it is the instrument for transforming natural resources into useful goods it is also the means for effecting social change inclusive development must involve women since poverty is particularly acute for women living in rural households there is a need to empower these poor women through science and technology sustainable development depends on an equitable distribution of resources for today and for the future it cannot be achieved without gender equality women's empowerment is a key factor for achieving sustainable economic growth social development and environmental sustainability sustainable development is broadly defined as development which meets the requirement of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs sustainable development should be a key principle of all policies and actions which are broadly designed to create a society which is based on freedom democracy and respect for fundamental rights fostering equality of opportunity and solidarity within and between generations so again i hope this event is meant to update the theoretical knowledge of the participants of the web conference again i extend my warm welcome and i wish to thank all dignitaries all invited speakers all participants and all those who have contributed in the successful organization of this great event thanks to all namaste thank you sir for uh, your welcome speech now now i would like to call upon the chief guest come inaugurator of this ceremony she she is the heart and soul of indian science congress india so she worked day and night for the upliftment of indian science congress india she is none other than professor dr vijay lakshmi saxena madam so i would like to request her to give her speech please madam and bless us a oh, very good morning to you all attending this webinar shri gautam das principal dharmnagar government college dharmnagar tripura president of the session shri saju wahid director higher education government of tripura is the guest of honor professor dr ashok kumar saxena past general president indian science congress dr manoj kumar chakravarti past general president indian science congress Dr. Nibesha Chakravarti, Executive Committee Member of the Indian Science Congress. Dr. Sambhu Nath Rakshit, Chairperson and Patron, Iska Dharm Nagar Chapter. Dr. Manik Mattacharya, Convener, Iska Dharm Nagar Chapter. Dr. Suman Adhikari, Organizing Secretary, Dharm Nagar. All the participants of the webinar, invited speakers, advisory committee and organizing committee members, council members, chapter conveners of Iska. faculty members and students from tripura and from other institute and colleges of the country my beloved student fraternity media personnel ladies and gentlemen first of all i feel privileged to have been granted the opportunity to express my views on science and technology for sustainable development with women empowerment such a relevant topic i wish to thank dr manik bhattacharya convener iska Dharamnagar chapter as well as Dr. Manoj Machakravarti for inviting me for this seminar to share my views with you all. When a uh, now coming to the theme, when our country became independent, India was the poorest of the poor country with a literacy rate of just around 12 percent. 
and the life expectancy of about 32 years today in about 70 years india is one of the top 5 economies in the world and the life expectancy is 70 years this remarkable transformation was possible due to the application of <coughs> science and technology in building the nation by the 1960s the nation invested in the green revolution which turned us from 50 million tons of food grains in the 1950s to feed 30 crore people we make 260 million tons today to feed 135 crores of people it is to be realized that food grain production has increased over five fold in the country we have established the sir drdo lab the st institution and we have established world class educational institutions like IITs and IITs IIMs AIMs medical colleges and several reputed universities isro and atomic energy establishments are performing beyond the expectations of the society and the government our surgeons and physicians tackle the most complicated medical problems in our hospitals health care <coughs> available in india is of international standard over the past decade scientific research and with the collaboration with defense and space research organization have resulted in a remarkable progress of indian science and technology across various aspects like agriculture healthcare and medicines transportation communication heavy industries energy sectors defense and space technologies the sudden outbreak of the corona virus disease also known as covid-19 has already disrupted our entire world as the infection spreading the healthcare system of not only india but almost but also of the most advanced countries have reached their capacity moreover this pandemic had also triggered a remarkable socio economic disruption caused by the postponement or cancellation of major sports religious political cultural and educational events now due to the advanced scientific research in virology vaccination antiviral drug covid-19 vaccine is already being manufactured in different parts of the world including india as the president of indian science congress i would like to convey my complete support to all of the country medical and healthcare professionals who are devoting their lives to treat and take care of our infected citizens interestingly small droplets produced by coughing sneezing and even talking are identified as the major carriers of this pandemic thus it is also very important to trace and track the infected persons and potential asymptomatic carriers of this deadly virus advances in science communication and internet technologies can be efficiently used for contact tracing required to combat the ever increasing spread of this pandemic arogya setu is one of the example of indigenously developed such contact tracing mobile app continuing in these directions i expect future healthcare and medical platforms with explore advanced science and smart technologies even more to tackle future pandemics according to <clears throat> mr pallav bagla delhi based science and technology journalist india's massive vaccination drive has been an eye opener that the country developed an indigenous vaccine against covid-19 in less than 8 months is itself amazing but the biggest eye popping fear is that india has been able to deploy the two vaccine to all corners of india and the globe now even the old colonial master of india the united kingdom is sourcing the vaccine from india even though it was developed in their own backyard india is fast emerging as the global hub for vaccine manufacturer Experts say that increasing the pace of vaccinations in India is a given. A ramping up should happen at a highly accelerated pace, since as the current pace of vaccination reaches herd immunity, 
may take upwards of two years. There are another 28 candidate Indian vaccine in the pipeline. Not just this, India also has robust pipeline of several new vaccines. Four, five vaccines are in advanced stage of clinical trial. This is also a fact to be celebrated. India was able to supply a vaccine to all of its neighbors countries, including Pakistan, free of cost and is likely to benefit by receiving the India-made Covishield vaccine to inoculate its citizens. In a statement after the Fed summit, the White House said the U.S. will work with Biological Limited to finance increased capacity to support biological <coughs> efforts to produce at least 1 billion doses of COVID-19 vaccine by the end of 2022 using the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. According to data from the External Affairs Ministry, about 58.5 million doses of vaccine will be supplied by India to over 17, 76 countries as per the Health Ministry. Upwards of 5.2 million people have received both the doses of the vaccine, which is like vaccinating the entire population of Singapore. The report says the UK has asked Serum Institute of India to supply 10 million doses of Covishield vaccine that was developed by the Oxford University. Quite a reversal of roles, one can suggest, in just 73 years after India gained independence from the UK, even Brazil is now buying 20 million doses of Covaxin. As a consequence, India, India's Science and Health Minister Dr. Harshvardhan aptly described the last year as India's year of science. The pandemic may have begun in China, but beginning of the end of pandemic may well have begun by India. Indian biotech companies have captured the vaccine field and within a short time and became the vaccine makers for the world. About 45% of the entire children's vaccines of the world are now being manufactured and distributed by these Indian biotech companies. 30 to 40 years back, India was a beggar for vaccine and today, India is a donor for vaccine. We are donating different types of vaccine to more than 100 countries. India is designing, developing and launching world-class communication and remote sensing satellite. These communication satellites have brought out a sea change in a communication network. In India, data is provided at a rate of less than 20 pesos per GB, which is the cheapest rate in the world. This data connectivity and availability at a very low cost came handy for online classes during the pandemic. People with degrees from Indian universities and institutes have made their mark at the Silicon Valley in the U.S. Illustrious example being Satya Nadella, CEO of Microsoft, Sundar Pichai, CEO of Google, Arvind Krishna, CEO of IBM, and many, many more others. <clears throat> the Indian software industry has been an exemplary for Indian industry. With a short period of 20 years, software industry has created a large number of high-quality jobs, generated considerable foreign exchange for the country. Software industry continues to have huge opportunities in the future also. India is moving fast toward 5 trillion US dollar economy from the present 3 trillion US dollar economy. COVID-19 pandemic forced us to realize that instead of importing, developing indigenous technology and manufacturing waste should be the national priority. Hence, the government of India is strongly encouraging our Nirbhar Bharat that is self-reliant India. COVID-19 is providing us a good opportunity to realize digital India in several sectors such as health, education, development of apps and business, etc. New technologies in the domain of advanced materials and nanotechnology, artificial intelligence and machine learning, virtual reality, quantum computing, biotechnology and pharmaceuticals, etc will be the key drivers of growth. 
many of you are of you are aware that 5g has been designed with the capability to meet the huge growth in data and connectivity of today's modern society 5g will enable instantaneous connectivity to billions of devices the internet of things and a truly connected world it is necessary to recognize that the participation of women in science and technology is no longer simply an issue of gender equality it is also an issue that should be considered in national economic development women are both consumers and producers they can make a difference if they are involved and considered in economic development plans with science and technology at the heart of economic development women's participation in science and technology is therefore an essential part of economic development strategies as a famous scientist madam curie quoted i was taught that the way of progress was neither swift nor easy it is true that the road for including women present in science and technology is not smooth yet we have to make determined effort for encouraging the participation in this field because the world cannot afford the loss of the talents of half of its people if we are to solve the many problems which beset us the process of knowledge creation and generation has to include women says nobel laureate rosalind yellow agreeing with dr vijay lakshmi ravindranath who said we need to develop a critical mass of women scientists in the decision making process to make a dent i feel that we must harbor in creating more in institutions of excellence at par with nalanda and takshila where future women scientists can work together learn together and develop innovative ideas with the feeling of togetherness and commitment to the national development in the inaugural address of the indian science congress held at bangalore in january 2020 the honorable prime minister modi ji emphatically mentioned innovate patent produce and prosper the government of india emphasizes that education plays a pivotal role in human resource development and thus the national education policy 2020 lays the foundation for new india of the 21st century india of the next 25 years will be very different from what it is now hence the student knowledge base must be flexible to cope with the 21st century job the national education policy 2020 will make india a knowledge superpower now it is india's turn all of us know that a time has come i am very confident that a time has come and india is all set to regain its due place in the committee of nations by these words i inaugurate the webinar jai hind jai bharat jai vigyan thank you one and all thank you madam thank you madam Uh, thank you madam for your providing such a thorough information about the theme it was nicest experience to hear you madam we are blessed with your word madam thank you and uh, we will meet you again madam thank you once again now now i would like to call upon and request uh one of the special guest of this program he is none other than professor dr ashok kumar saxena sir he is the man of ethics and he is the heart and soul of indian science congress without whose support we won't be able to establish iska dharmanagar chapter and he is the experienced and the most experienced person as far as iska is concerned so i would like to welcome you sir and uh, we, we are means uh, lucky enough to going to hear you sir so please sir S uh, sir you have to unmute yourself sir 
प्लीज अनम्यूट योर सेल्फ सर ओके सर थैंक यू वेरी मच डॉक्टर सिन्हा प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ दिस सेशन मिस्टर गौतम दास प्रिंसिपल गवर्नमेंट डिग्री कॉलेज धर्मनगर आवर चीफ गेस्ट डॉक्टर विजयलक्ष्मी सक्सेना जनरल प्रेसिडेंट इंडियन साइंस कांग्रेस एसोसिएशन गेस्ट ऑफ ऑनर श्री साजू वाहिद डायरेक्टर हायर एजुकेशन गवर्नमेंट ऑफ त्रिपुरा डॉक्टर मनोज कुमार चक्रवर्ती आवर पास जनरल प्रेसिडेंट इंडियन साइंस कांग्रेस डॉक्टर निवेदिता चक्रवर्ती इलेक्टेड मेंबर ऑफ एग्जीक्यूटिव कमेटी ऑफ इंडियन साइंस कांग्रेस पैटर्न एंड चेयरपर्सन ऑफ इसका धर्मनगर चैप्टर डॉक्टर शंभू नाथ रक्षित कन्वीनर ऑफ इसका धर्मनगर चैप्टर डॉक्टर मानिक भट्टाचार्य जी ऑर्गेनाइजिंग सेक्रेटरी ऑफ दिस वेबिनार डॉक्टर सुमन अधिकारी डॉक्टर अनुकुल सिन्हा ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट गेस्ट स्पीकर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमेटी मेंबर्स काउंसिल मेंबर्स चैप्टर कन्वीनर ऑफ इंडियन साइंस कांग्रेस फैकल्टी मेंबर्स माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन मीडिया पर्सनल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई विश टू थैंक डॉक्टर मानिक भट्टाचार्य कन्वीनर ऑफ इसका धर्म नगर चैप्टर फॉर इन्वाइटिंग मी फॉर दिस वेबिनार टू शेयर माय व्यूज विद दिस अगस्त गैदरिंग इट इज माय ऑनर टू टेक यू थ्रू द एमिनेंट जर्नी ऑफ वन जीरो एट ईयर ऑफ इंडियन साइंस कांग्रेस एसोसिएशन आई एम आज टू लेट यू नो अबाउट द इंडियन साइंस कांग्रेस एसोसिएशन इसका फाउंडेड इन नाइनटीन एट कोलकाता बाई टू ब्रिटिश केमिकल साइंटिस्ट प्रोफेसर मैकमोन एंड प्रोफेसर साइमोनसन First is the meeting was held in the building of Asiatic Society of India at Kolkata in 1914. Sir Ashutosh Mukherjee was the first general president of ISCA who was the chief justice of Kolkata and also the vice chancellor of Kolkata University. At that time 105 scientists throughout the country attended the session and 35 papers were presented and divided into six sections under six sectional presidents. from this modest beginning now we are having more than 50000 life members and about 12000 annual members and not not less than 15000 are attending the annual session and more than 2000 papers are presenting in 14 different sections under 14 sectional presidents the silver jubilee was held at calcutta in 1938 with sir james as general president on the eve of indian independence the 34th session was held at delhi in january 1947 with pandit jawaharlal nehru prime minister of india as general president pandit nehru's personal interest in science congress continued ever since and there had been hardly any session during his lifetime which he did not attend after this whomsoever our prime minister of india is ka annual session was inaugurated by him this trend is still continues from 1947 interaction and program of for inviting representatives from foreign societies and academies were included in the science congress this trend is still continues with the support of department of science and technology government of india new delhi golden jubilee session was held in delhi in 1963 with professor d s kotari as general president at this occasion two special volumes were brought out a short history of indian science congress association first 50 years of science in india in 12 volumes diamond jubilee was held at chandigarh in 1973 under the presidentship of dr s bhagavatham on this occasion also two special publications were brought out a dictate 1963 to 72 iska with life sketches of general president a decade 1963 to 72 of science in india in section wise introduction of the focal theme in 1976 dr m s swaminathan the then general president of iska introduced the focal theme of national relevance which now discussed in every session another significant trend breakthrough was made in 1980 when the department of science and technology set up a permanent task force involving representatives of iska and chief of different agencies and voluntary organizations chaired by secretary dst as being responsible for following up recommendations on the focal theme though this process the iska has been contributing 
to the development of science in general and national science policy in particular. Young Scientist Award program was introduced for the young scientists under the age of 32 years from 68th session held at Varanasi in 1981 under the presidentship of Professor A.K. Sharma. Two best poster presentation awards were also introduced with no age bar. Platinum Jubilee was held in 1988 with Professor C.N.R. Rao as general president at Pune. The main programs were bringing out special publication, presentation of plaque to general president, establishment of Platinum Jubilee lectures in each section. Every year at annual session of Indian Science Congress, with a focal theme of national importance, the following major activities were started with the support of Department of Science and Technology, New Delhi, to generate scientific tem temper and popularize science. Children's Science Congress and Science Communicators Meet. The two women scientists, Professor Geeta Bali, General President, and Dr. Vijay Lakshmi Satrayana, General Secretary of ISCA, started the Women Science Congress from 2012 at Bhubaneswar. Centenary session was held at Kolkata in 2013 under the presidentship of Dr. Manmohan Singh, the then Honorable Prime Minister of India. At this occasion, 10 number of Astosh Mukherjee Fellowship were instituted to honor and encourage senior scientists in India. The Science, Technology and Innovation Policy 2013 was released. Indian, India's post stamps were released by the po Department of Post for the Centenary Celebration. A special book entitled The Centenary Session of the Indian Science Congress Nationwide Celebration was published so as to present the information about the initiative of ISCA towards the centenary celebration through its various chapters in India. From this centenary year, Department of Science and Technology provides one crore for chapters to organize different functions to popularize science. At present, we are having 26 ISCA chapters are running throughout the country. The most important things of ISCA, ISCA for, is for everybody. The graduate of any stream can become the member of Indian Science Congress. Anybody can attend the Indian Science Congress annual function. Any member, whether young or old, can interact with the Nobel Laureate one-to-one. -one. ISCA organizing plenary sessions with international known scientists on latest topics so any member can interact with any scientist one to one. Two Prime Minister of India general, became the general president and one Nobel laureate also became the general president of Indian Science Congress. Every time the inaugural program of Indian Science Congress will be directly telecast for one hour in 126 countries. We invite all of you for 108 annual Science Congress association session. We will now, we have fixed a prop to Lucknow University as the 108 session in 2022. So all of you are invited to attend this session. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.
So we are back again. Sorry for the interruption. As I told earlier that uh, we are facing some problem. Uh, means uh, justice that is strong last night. So which is beyond our hand. So anyway, I would like to. Sir, can you hear me? Can you hear my Yes, sir. Now you can proceed for next person. Oh, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. So, yeah. uh, thanks, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, it is always feel quite motivating to hear you, sir. I hope we will be lucky enough to hear you again and again. Hope to get constant su support and guidance from you, sir. Uh, and thanks again, sir. Thank you very much. Now, Sorry for the interruption. Please uh, be calm uh, to all the part. It's my request to all the participants. Please uh, be patient. We are moving forward. Now we have with us one of the special guests of this program, Dr. Manoj Kumar Chakraborty, sir, currently an ICMR Emirates medical scientist. He is highly reputed for his work. He served as a scientist. G and director in charge in National Institution of Cholera and Enteric Disease. Uh, now uh, he is the past uh, general president of Indian Science Congress. So I would like to request him to bless us with his word. So please, sir. Thank you, <coughs> respected Professor Vijay Lakshmi Saxena, general president ISCA. Professor Ashok Kumar Saxena, past General President ISCA, Professor Gautam Das, Principal, Dharmanagar College, Sri Shaju Waheed, Director of Higher Education, Dr. Nibita Chakravarti, Member EC ISCA, and Principal, Victoria Institution College, Professor Somhunat Rokhet, former Principal, Dharmanagar College, Dr. Manik Bhattacharya, Convener, Iska Dharmanagar Chapter, Dr. Shuman Odhikari Treasurer, Dr. Ankon Sina, HOD Physical Education, Dharmanagar College, all invited speakers, chapter conveners of Iska, teaching and non teaching faculties of Dharmanagar College, and student friends. At the outset, I would like to express my sincere thanks to all members of Iska Dharmanagar Chapter for giving me an opportunity to talk to you at this webinar on science and technology for sustainable development with women empowerment. I express my deep sense of gratitude to Professor Vijay Lakshmi Saxena and Professor Ashok Kumar Saxena for opening a chapter at Dharmanagar, which is one of the remote areas. I remember that genesis of this chapter started with the initiative of Professor Anangha Mohan Chandra, former convener ISKA Kolkata chapter, late Dr. Shantanu Ghosh, first convener ISKA Dharmanagar chapter, Professor Somhunath Rokkit, former principal Dharmanagar College, Dr. Manik Bhattacharya, Dr. Shuman Odhikari, and all other faculties of Dharmanagar College to organize a seminar at Dharmanagar College under the banner of ISKA Kolkata chapter. Professor Ashok Saxena and Professor Vijay Lakshmi Saxena attended that seminar. We still remember that the seminar was organized by the college in a highly professional manner. 
professor vijay lakshmi saxena and professor ashok saxena immediately decided to open the dharmanagar chapter we understand that dharmanagar chapter is one of the best chapters of iska we hope that with the able leadership of professor gautam das professor somhunath rokit dr manik bhatacharya dr suman adhikari and dr ankan sinha the chapter will continue in excelling its activities coming to the focal theme of iska i would like to mention that in continuation to the issues raised raised by professor vijay lakshmi saxena that government of india has taken several steps to encourage and involve women in the development of science and technology of our nation the scenario is changing very rapidly in spite of this development we have to remember that still our women force is under utilized this situation is prevailing in international setup also worldwide the capacity of women to engage in knowledge society is not utilized fully we know that women are a great human resource and the role of women in society is absolutely vital for its progress we know that iska has 25 chapters throughout the country each chapter is organizing different awareness programs conferences etc in the context of present situation these type of activities are very much essential with the development of knowledge based industries such as information technology biotechnology etc knowledge has become a great factor in the creation of wealth of a nation now we need a large number of human resources who can contribute in the field of science and technology we know that the for, for the coming 25 years our population will be dominated by the age group of 17 to 28 years majority of this age group should be attracted to science and technology as their career this contribution will ultimately yeah. help our country to prosper and to compete with other nations we understand that commercialized innovation is a must for the growth of a nation in 2013 already professor saxena has mentioned that snt policy of government of india has been declared at the centenary session of indian science congress at kolkata by the the then honorable prime minister of india dr manmohan singh and innovation has been included in the policy this is now science and technology and innovation science technology and innovation innovation may come from any level our country is rich in local problem based innovation iska has been organizing science and technology exhibition every year iska is giving priority to the farmers and others to exhibit their novel uh, innovations at science congress since independence our country has developed a very good infrastructural facility for doing quality research and the scientists of our country have contributed significantly in different fields such as space research yeah. atomic research agricultural research biomedical and pharmaceutical research this has been very uh, lucidly explained by our general president dr vijay lakshmi saxena we understand that in the technical session deliberation will be made by the senior scientists and a large number of students will participate this will make this webinar a good platform for the interaction of scientific thoughts between the students and senior researcher which will enrich and stimulate the young minds to undertake challenges of doing good research <coughs> uh, good and excellent research with these few words i wish all success of this webinar thank you all for your kind participation at this webinar thank you
थैंक यू सर थैंक यू लॉर्ड सर फॉर योर प्रेजिंग वर्ड्स एंड एनकरेजिंग वर्ड्स यू आर ऑलवेज एन इंस्पिरेशनल फिगर फॉर अस थैंक यू फॉर ग्रेसिंग दिस ओकेजन विथ योर काइंड वर्ड सर आई वुड लाइक टू गिव यू थैंक्स वंस अगेन सर थैंक यू सर now without any delay we we will move move towards we have with us one more special guest of this program dr nivedita chakravarti madam she is the elected member of executive body of iska and she is also as a principal of victoria institution college so Uh, i would be waiting to hear you ma'am and uh, we will be blessed with your word so please ma'am thank you uncle good morning everybody respected madam professor bijay lakshmi saxena general president iska respected professor ashok kumar saxena past general president iska professor gautam dash principal government degree college of Dhar dharmanagar and and sri saju vadi uh, director higher education dharmanagar chapter the, sorry the higher education dharmanagar a tripura i i i think tripura sorry and then dr manoj kumar chakraborty past general president iska dr manik bhattacharya a convener is uh, convener uh, dharmanagar chapter iska dr shuman adhikari dr ankun sinha invited speaker of today's web uh, national conference web conference the all the participants teaching staff of the college and last but not the least my beloved students i would like to thank first of all the convener of tripura chapter dr manik bhattacharya and the principal of this government college professor gautam dash to uh, to give me an opportunity to share my views with you regarding the theme of this year science congress already you heard that, that the theme of this year is science and technology for sustainable development with women empowerment um in my view opinion that the theme is very much relevant for our nation and uh, you know that madam you heard um, all the achievements thoroughly and in detail from the starting of our independence madam saxena discussed everything in her lecture uh, but i have to say some other thing that in india's contradiction everyone in india realizes that there is a great difference between urban and rural life so in that sense the, that this theme the science and technology for sustainable development is very very important for our and for the uh, women in our in uh, empowerment because both are uh, related very much related that i will discuss and you heard also from uh, dr chakraborty and dr madam saxena's lecture so the uh, so this contradiction i go i was telling that there is you know india launches rockets and is ready to enter into the developed mo modern india but some part of india still goes on a bullish path and yes is yet to come out of the 18th 19th century so i am not going into detail about what we are not having but just uh, in a very nutshell i just want to discuss about the you know that uh, internet problem you are facing right now in a city and i have seen in west bengal that in the when we are conducting the online classes the students from the rural area rural uh, students they cannot enter into the classes so we need 
uh, we need to have this uh, internet the internet problem solution that is the solution so uh, the these are the and so other so many other things like electricity is not in the rural area and uh, mm, you know and the what the drinking water we just drinking water problem is there so we need sustainable development to meet the requirement of the society without uh, compromising with the ability of future generations to meet their own needs we also know that the goal of sustainable development is to achieve balance between environmental sustainability and economic sustainability that is socio economic sustainability like environmental sustainability uh, it requires the protection of public health and safety by eliminating harmful substances from entering into the environment and the also to protect the nature to protect the nature for future the population will be 9 billion in 2050 to feed the to feed and to keep healthy these huge population the environment may be disturbed so we have to uh, have to plan a long term planning uh, we need that thing to protect the environment and the mankind and madam saxena told about all the see in this 21st century we couldn't do for Uh, like six months, nothing with that tiny virus. So it it it's a long term planning is necessary for this type of also this type of um, uh, virus, other health problem, health issues. So uh, we need more scientists, more scientists to discover these technologies and. work on this field for the development sustainable development of the nation what which will ensure clean water clean energy sufficient food and and health problem solving solving health problem of the uh, our national for everybody so economic and another thing is economic growth economic growth building economic and social development is the process by which the economic well being and quality of the nation region local community or an individual and on are improved according to the targeted goals and objectives to improve the well being of the people to increase the gdp so for total sustainable development there should be long term plan planning to in involve more young people what dr chakraborty told and madam saxena told that a more women in science education the french nobel laureate sarge haroche he told according to him the education is to improve the fortune of all the all the countries so we need education and then science education and equal participation of both male and female in science and technology and uh, uh, and and for the betterment of the of all people or all, all people all rural or urban people we need to work so but we are very lucky that we have a large number of you both male and female but we have to utilize this uh, this huge human resource as an asset not as an uh, liability of our country to make uh, to make more scientists and technologies for the growth of our nations and a no nation can progress first if three fourth of it almost three fourth of is of it is to be carried as a burden so we Have to make them our asset, that human resource. And and another thing, I just I just want to share in this uh, moment that um, we are we are very happy that this year in the Science Day, Government of India announces eleven chairs. in the name of 11 chairs across the across indian institution okay. um 
in the name of 11 women scientist uh women 11 women scientist it's okay are you hearing are you listening hello uncle are you listening i don't know they are they can hear or not okay uh, so 11 according to the name of 11 women uh, like archana sharma janki anmal darshan uh, ranganathan ashima chatterjee kadambini ganguli iravati karve anna mani rajeshwari chatterjee uh, raman parmi parmila diva choudhury and kamal rana randeve so we are very proud about this 11 chairs and so now uh, we are uh, so i would like to thank again all of you for patient hearing and thank you very much i don't know if they can hear or not i'm not sure now now we are moving forward and i would like to request the principal in charge of government degree college dhamnagar north in charge shri gautam das sir north to give her his presidential speech so please sir good morning respected chief guest professor vijay lakshmi saxena president indian science congress association respected guest of honor sri saju wahed a director directorate of higher education government of tripura special guest professor ashok kumar saxena past president iska special guest dr manoj kumar chakraborty past president iska special guest dr nivedita chakraborty member executive committee iska dr sambhunath rakti chairman iska dharmanagar chapter dr manik bhatacharya convener iska dharmanagar chapter dr suman adhikari organizing secretary at hod department of chemistry gdc dharmanagar dr ankur sinha teachers council secretary all dignitaries and participants on behalf of government degree college dharmanagar i wish you a hearty welcome and congratulation on today's national of conference on science and technology for sustainable development with women empowerment 2021 organized by indian science congress association dharmanagar chapter in collaboration with department of chemistry and department of physical education government degree college dharmanagar tripura it is a great privilege to me to address to you such great personalities and participants from all over india we have with us as a research person dr norul alam choudhury assistant professor nagaland university 
ডক্টর সুরজিৎ সেন অ্যাসিস্ট্যান্ট প্রফেসর রাম ঠাকুর কলেজ আগরতলা ত্রিপুরা ডক্টর সৈকত চ্যাটার্জি অ্যাসিস্ট্যান্ট প্রফেসর কল্যাণী ইউনিভার্সিটি ওয়েস্ট বেঙ্গল প্রফেসর জিৎ পাঠক ডেড কলেজ <laughs> <laughs> well as the great scope and duty to uplift the mission and vision of indian science congress association professor vijay lakshmi saxena ma'am has informed us about covid vaccine preparation in india elaborately also mention the artificial intelligence nanotechnology gender equality and national education policy and more thank you ma'am professor ashok kumar saxena inform us the history of iska since 1914 in his valuable speech and more thank you sir dr manoj kumar chakraborty inform us the history of iska dharmanagar chapter very nicely and also mention the involvement of omen in knowledge society and more dr nivedita ma'am messages are that the topics is appropriate and important to our nation also mention the need of use of human resource this oef conference will focus on economic growth environmental protection and also discuss on the development of omen self help group agriculture waste management sanitation sanitation through science and also promote the science and technology and inculcate or implant the scientific temper among omen because using and accessing technology is not readily available and certainly not a privileged choice this is particularly true for omen and girls in this oef conference the discussion will be on the availability of science and technology for women to exercise for their sustainable development of empowerment it may be their primary education higher education research work medical engineering studies with science and technology there may be skill development in farming gardening cultivation business marketing self defense health and nutrition and equal participation of women in all aspect especially they are equal participation in policy making system of the country we the all participants are eagerly waiting for listen the speeches from all research persons i hope the interaction session will be very much fruitful and the outcomes of this webinar will enrich our knowledge and thoughts all dignitaries have shared their valuable time with us again congratulations all of you on behalf of government degree college dharmnagar tripura i wish great success of this web conference
थैंक यू ऑल नमस्कार थैंक यू सो मच सर फॉर योर वंडरफुल एंड वैल्यूएबल स्पीच नाउ विदाउट एनी डिले आई वुड लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर अंकन सिन्हा एच ओडी ऑफ फिजिकल एडुकेशन फॉर वोट ऑफ थैंक्स सो प्लीज सर Thank you, Mr. Chief Sir. We are going to the end of the lecture. On behalf of the entire organizing committee and organizing committee, I would like to my heartfelt thank to all the dignitaries present over here, the resource persons, the invited speakers, uh, as well as the participants from different corners of India, as well as from abroad, for your presence and yours too. As we are having a change uh, due to that where still you are waiting for us uh, listening to all the invited speakers uh, and I hope this will be a great experience to hear them all. So I would like to uh, thank all the dignitaries, all the guests present over here, the organizers, the participants, each and everyone who are present over here. And with these words, I would like to conclude the first inaugural session over here. And we are moving to the first technical session. Thank you, one and all. Now, we are with us. We have with us the first speaker of this program, Dr. Narul Alam Choudhury. I would like to request him. So, can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Uh, uh, are you prepared prepare with your PPT, sir? Yeah. Yes, sir. I, I am ready with my presentation. Okay, I'm sir. Ready, you sir. can share the PPT and start your. Okay, sir. Okay. So, thank you, sir, for accepting our request, and uh, you can proceed with your presentation, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Sir, uh, so actually, here one second. Trying to get uh, so, um, having some issues actually, sir. You have to share the slide, okay? Achha. Or share the slides, no? Uh, share, go to the option, okay. share, okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then a uh, video file. Share eh? screen. Share screen. Ah, share your screen. Share ah. so if you have to be uh, make it open uh, on the backstage, means you have to open the PPT on desktop. Then you have to share the oh. slide. Oh, oh, oh okay, ah. okay, okay. Okay, okay. Sorry. It's coming. Oh, is it coming? But it is blank. But okay, okay, okay. One second, sir. There's no PPT. Just first uh, open the PPT on your desktop. Then come to share the slide. Okay. Sorry, Sorry for that. Actually, share. It is so, 
उटोट It is there in that. I'm uh, sorry, actually, a little bit. Um, अच्छा, um, okay, share I go and then application window, na? No? Okay, mm. application window. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, yes. Can you see now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. And okay, there you can go for slideshow, but you can't see the screen. Go for okay. slideshow. Is it, is it okay? uh not now uh, you have to click the slide show slide show ha huh. actually it is showing um, stop sharing means uh, no 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 don't go for uh, stop sharing it is okay it is bodo korte hobe acha you have to increase the size of slide okay better to okay, okay, scroll okay. Scroll it back. Means or otherwise there is a slideshow option. Yes, 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 yes. But bit. Mm hmm. Okay, okay. Should I have to make it a full screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Full screen. You have to go for slideshow. Then it will be full screen. Ha 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 ha. Is it? Uh... Mm, Otherwise, you can yeah. proceed with this one also. It is uh, also means you can go with it. Okay, let me start once again. Now, huh? let me start once again. Share screen. Yeah, share window. Okay. Ah, okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Let me do. Let's see. Hmm. Actually, I'm not able to do it this one. Actually, now that uh... so, uh, earlier it was yes, okay, sir. You have to. Uh, it's okay, it okay, 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 sir. It's enough. Okay, yes, sir, yes, sir. Let's, let's go like that, now. Okay, sir. You can start, sir. Okay. I can start, no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Doctor Sina, can you see the slide properly now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now is it okay? Yes, sir. Acha, acha. Okay. So good morning, um, all the uh, dignitaries and the students. Uh, I am uh, thankful to the organizing committee, especially Doctor um, Suman Odikari. my collaborator and uh, friend for inviting me to this uh, interesting uh, web conference organized by indian uh, science congress uh, dharmanagar chapter and uh, uh, government degree college dharmanagar uh, it's i am i hope this is actually very interesting uh, to listen to the uh, special guest uh, who has spoken this morning uh, it's a lot of learning experience for me uh, i'll uh, try to um, actually this uh, theme is actually it is like supported by dst so i have chosen a topic uh, which is i tried my best to choose a relevant topic so my topic uh, is dst at 50 funding opportunities for women in science and technology so now let me come to this uh, dst department of science and technology who was established in may 1971 so this year may it will turn 50 years so it's a long journey uh, for the department of science and technology 
to advance the science and technology research in India. Uh, so the main purpose, actually, I believe there are many students. Uh, the dignitaries might be well aware of, of this uh, discussion that I'm going to present. But uh, I think uh, the main target uh, for my uh, presentation talk is the students, because they mostly college students and university students who might be interested uh, to know uh, the future prospects uh, in science and engineering uh, field. So mainly it is to give some information to those participants, young participants. So DST, what are the main uh, purpose of the Department of Science and Science Technology? For people like us, young people like us who are actually, you know, kind of faculty members uh, in different institutes and universities, colleges, our aim is to get some research funding from the um, funding agencies, government funding agencies, so that we can pursue our research activities. So the main uh, the main purpose that we look forward is the funding uh, for research. So, but uh, the DST uh, has many scientific programs. So, the first one is science and engineering research. Second one is technology development. That is use the science uh, inventions discoveries to develop technology. Then we have international science and technology cooperation. So it does cooperate between international science and technology. Then we have science and technology for socio-economic program. It is nowadays being realized that science should serve the society. So one of the theme is of DST is to um, uh, do the uh, the you know enhancement of science and technology inventions to bring it to the society, so, uh, social and economic development. Then uh, it has the uh, purpose of uh, technology missions division. It uh, and then lastly it is the women science programs. So women science program since the my topic and the focus theme of this uh, particular web conference is related to women. So I think I will go to that one, women science programs in details. So now gender equality is very important. We see that in India, we have uh, the male to female ratio is a little bit skewed uh, for uh, 1000 uh, male, we have less than 1000 females because of various uh, social regions. So to, uh, to, because that is also a kind of a handicap. As we know that, you know, men and women have been gifted with different complementary uh, qualities. So because of this skewed societal uh, attitude, so we are not able to get the best benefit out of our whole population. So to tackle that, to address this issue, government of India has launched the a program called GOTI, G-A-T-I. Its full form is Gender Advancement for Transforming Institutions. So what is that? It was launched in uh, on Science National Science Day, that is 28 February uh, 2020 last year by Honorable President of India. And uh, the objective of this, uh, this uh, GATI is to achieve gender advancement in science and technology area at institutional level. Under this uh, scheme, women scientists are being encouraged to pursue research in frontier areas of science and engineering on problems of societal relevance and to take up science and technology based internship followed by self employment. So the last word is very important. All this support is expected to lead to self-employment. So this is the main theme of that. Now, there are three categories of research, uh, uh, three categories of fellowships under this women's scientist schemes. So first one is women's scientist scheme A. 
second one is women scientist scheme b and third one is women scientist scheme c now what is the common thing among these three is that there are research grants that is some funding some money is available and this scheme these fellowships can be available by indian citizens only so what is the main thing about uh, the first scheme that is wosa it is for research in basic and applied science second one is uh, the second one that is the women scientist scheme b it it focuses on science and technology interventions for societal benefit so it is a kind of application of science and technology to society so that is a kind of uh, link between society and science and technology the first one is purely research okay second second one is uh, bringing second one focuses to bringing the science and technology innovations to the society for the benefit of society and third one that is women scientist scheme c wosc it is uh, related to internship in intellectual property rights for the self employment now the third one may not be little bit uh, you know known to the young participants so what happens when they, whenever there is a innovation invention this is protected it is protected by you know protected uh, by the you know so that it is protected such that uh, you know the benefit of the financial benefit of this uh, scheme goes to the uh, kindly give me one minute <clears throat> I'm sorry for the uh, interruption. So the what happens when there is an innovation? So the inventor or the institute that support the innovation that uh, that uh, actually needs the um, that needs to protect the usage of that so that it gets the benefits of the innovations. So that is it gets some royalties from the uses of the innovation. So that is again a very important field now so that is uh, the this uh, this rights intellectual rights is protected by uh, filing patents and 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 you know kind of uh, trademarks and all those things so this is a big area now so the the third scheme that is wsc focuses on developing giving skill to the women who are interested in uh, taking up their career in the field of intellectual property rights. So, now, what is the eligibility? This uh, these schemes encourages women in science and technology domain to explore the possibility of re-entry into the profession. This is a very important point because you know, uh, unlike men in our current society, women you know they have various you know, you know, they take up uh, more responsibility for the family. Uh, for example, Mary is child birth and take care of the child. So what happens is disturbs the career of a woman more than a man. So to address the issue, so uh, the government of India is giving some uh, special consideration to the women uh, professionals. So sometimes there is a break in the career because of child, I have mentioned childbirth and then you know child care now, to make the reentry of the women into back to the profession scheme is this these schemes are given. So the so reentry of profession means after breakup the uh, women scientists or technologists can enter the profession easily. And so after the career break and it's also applicable to those women who do not have regular employment. They have the eligibility, they are uh, they have the capability, but uh, they do not have regular employment. So, in that, these schemes are helpful. Now, age so, minimum age for uh, the women's scheme is 27 years, maximum age is 57 years. This is no to what 57 years, you know. It's, so women have a very, very wide, uh, you know, age limit, so that uh, to so that they can, you know, cope up with the difficulties. 
uh, of life and maintain their professional activities. This age is relaxed by five years for belonging uh, to SCST. Next is uh, into that. So after that, what are the kinds of supports that are provided? So uh, the uh, first entry category that there is uh, WSA and WSB, a research done is provided for a maximum of three years. Okay. And the uh, the project should be one should be back. So for if this project is a good be supported for a maximum of three years. What are the costs that can uh, cover under this grant? So like for example, fellowship of the applicant, that is a monthly fellowship, then okay. cost of small I think there may be some problem, there may be some problem, network connectivity. Sub connectivity problem, that's why Dr. Norul Alam is not able to present his
my audible yes yes sir you are yes. audible sir sir so uh, yeah. Yes, yes, you are audible, sir. Great problem. Yeah, I see. So we will call him. We are trying to contact him. We'll try for the last time to contact him. Otherwise, we will call him. Speak. वॉइस क्लियर है लेकिन सर वो स्क्रीन में नहीं है काफी चार पांच मिनट हो गया सर हम ट्राई कर रहे थे आपको कॉल करने का ओके so am i audible prasanth ji sir he he joined he joined okay hello yes sir am i audible sir hello Can you see me? Ah, uh, I can hear you. Am I audible? Can you see? Yes, sir. You can continue. Ah, uh, okay, 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 okay. Acha, my people. So, oh, people, sir, some people. Sorry, please. Should we go ahead? Hello. Hello. You are right. Voice is breaking. I am not able to hear things from you. Hello. 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 Uh, should I go ahead? I'm not getting any response. Hello. 
Is it okay now? I'm all well. So Can you hear me? We should do the next presentation after we will catch the uh, rules. Okay, okay, sir. TK, TK. Thank you. देखो ऑनलाइन आपने
अच्छा बिना पीपीटी कर दीची ऑडिबल ना हेलो हम ऑडिबल तले एक जन कांस्टेंटली बोल से so good afternoon today uh, going to present a topic can you use for me that is spoken a for empowering women a way for sustainable development so you can see here that uh, the my whole presentation is uh, divided into three That is sports. Second one is women empowerment, and the third one is sustainable development. So before going further detail to the this topic, we must know what is sports. As a layman, we are talking about sports, but exactly sports is a competitive physical activity which aims to use or to develop skills and physical ability by following the particular set of rules which is given by. the uh, uh, governing body or the federation so it is not only that just like volleyball football cricket it is becoming the way of because it is a part and parcel of our daily life as a necessity this is very essential for everyone's life sports is a physical culture which leads the people to have better fitness and health and well other hand physical It also consists of physical activities which lead to develop skills which complement nature, like jumping, running, walking, lifting, etc. So this is all about sports. Am I audible or uh, can you see my PowerPoint? If it is clear, then we will move. now next one is women empowerment what is that we must know the clear concept about women empowerment that is improving the women's status it's empowering women to take their own decision for their personal as well as social development it also helps women to improve their status the concept of women empowerment is a way to redefine gender next slide i don't know if you all or not but we will do a special development meet the need of the field that is it is the purpose of providing a living 
It means we should ensure that we do not consume the resources at a rate that makes it difficult for us to substitute or replace them. So we should be very calculative in using the resources so that it can be available for the future generation. So sustainable development also focuses in particular a few uh, elements like social development, economic development, and environment. So we should live in society social, economic, and environmentally protected. We should uh, it should be be uh, to live in the society. The next slide. The main part of this topic is why sports empower women. What is the, how to empower the women through sports, you can say. The sports is a powerful tool to build a confidence. Before that, we must know sports is a very pious and very in sacred field. Different from other fields. The to provide emotional services that different help develop stronger sense of confidence. If you are combining the uh, feeling of depression or stress, then you have better confidence. Which takes them to new high Champion gender equality means when we are only that is. Build.
Advocate, you can develop the skills also. The develop unity in them is much needed for their working in a team to the which helps them to manage the work in the certain limitations. In adverse conditions, you can manage things when you are having good management and which can be come through teamwork. The next one is develop self-esteem by, by sport being a sport as an international event. When one gets medal in greatest event, in, uh, as per me, uh, in all fields, Olympic is considered to be the greatest event from the ancient time. Like Olympic, instant overnight, one gets fame and recognition, which helps them to achieve the self-respect too. Courage to fight gender discrimination. The gender discrimination to the women become big issue in our society due to inequality. Anyway, we will move to our next part is develop self esteem. We have covered first to fight gender discrimination, gender discrimination in our society, but so this is the which helps the woman to bear any kind of load and create calm in them by producing endorphins. Endorphins is a hormone which is secreted and that Let it be of any people who are not allowed to laugh. They can't, they cannot dress in their eyes, cannot dance as well. This time, we are satisfied. Put 
हेलो अंकुन सर यस यस सर यू आर ऑडिबल बट ड्यू टू सम नेटवर्क कनेक्टिविटी योर वॉइस इज नॉट क्लियर पीपीटी या सर इट्स नॉट विजिबल यस सर am i audible yes sir you are audible now your ppt is also yes yes we can we can see your ppt sir should i repeat from earlier stage or uh, i can continue from jahan se jahan khatam kiye the wahan se due to network connectivity uh, we are having some problem Yes, sir. You are audible, but your voice is breaking. Thank you. So I continue. As there is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. You are audible. The next part. Is, yeah. We are really very sorry due to network problem. Ankan sir is trying to connect again, but due to network, this is there is poor network connectivity. As far as provide more visibility, it is very important as poor gives visibility to the woman. Poor people. Sports is the only sports is the only field which provides ample of diversity and differences to women. Due to increase increase popularity, self-respect, authority, women comes with the means that means they can match up with any kind of situation. This kind of exposure, investment, and sponsorship keep them motivated. To fight out the obstacles of life, and the and the next point is sports make women self reliant. How sports provide an woman a place to earn as a profession, which allow them to be independent. So. How so how sport may give employment and entrepreneurship for this job. Investing in girls today means they will and teach the girls of tomorrow. Through girls' participation. The ground, win on the ground leads to the win, win off the ground. 
it means winning the game will create much happiness of the people. People participate in and lose it for social development and who are in the group. Be a homemaker, women can be the nation maker too. For the sustainable development, healthy women can play a role. If you are healthy, they can you you can contribute for the sustainable sustainable development of the society. We can see that those countries who strengthen the gender equality, those who are focusing on gender equality, they become developed. They are going far far means beyond to achieve the sustainable development as compared to the developed. In India, about 48 or 50 50, 48 point something or 49 percent of population are from women, are allowed to be active in every space. If we allow them to be active in every sphere of life, then the nation will have a sustainable development. It is very clear. We have made progress on women and girls access to schools, but we need to ensure they can thrive in an environment that is safe and provide equal opportunities. So this is all about my presentation that how, how sports can influence the women empowerment and so the sustainable development. Thank you for patience here. And I know that there may be some uh, breaking of voice or not uh, visibility of the PPT. Anyway, I would like to end my presentation over here and uh, hand over the mic to Dr. Sanjit Dibnath. Thank you, Dr. Ankan Sinha, sir, for your wonderful uh, speech and wonderful uh, deliberation. Uh, due to some net network connectivity, sir, uh, there is some problem. But thank you, sir, on behalf of all the participants of this program. Now, I would like to welcome respected Dr. Surujit Sen, Assistant Professor, Department of English, Ramtagur College, Agartala. Hello, sir. First of all, uh, let me let me confirm if I am visible and audible. Yes, sir. You are visible and audible. Yes, too, absolutely sir. visible and audible too. Okay, okay. That is nice to know because in the earlier lecture also, Doctor Sina's uh, you know speech was interrupted quite a bit. Mm. Okay. Am I audible? Perfectly audible to everybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay. 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 First of all, uh, I must thank the organizers uh, for conducting uh, such an enriching program, uh, which is being, uh, you know, telecast everywhere right now. Uh, lots of participants are there. And uh, I'm going to speak about, um, you know, women empowerment through the use of science and technology. So it's a very important sort of thing that is women empowerment. Uh, first of all, I have an objection to that word empowerment empowerment that means to give power now if men and women are the same who are we to give them power so that term is a bit disturbing for me uh, anyway this term is uh, accepted by united nations as well so uh, there is an acceptability of that term woman empowerment 
but what i want to say first of all i would like to you know quote from atharva veda which says that jatra narayastu pujyante ramante tatra devata jatraitastu na pujyante sarvastatra phala kriya which means the divine are extremely happy where women are respected where they are not all actions are fruitless so that sums up the importance of women and why should we give more power why should we authorize them more and more that is an important sector and first of all i would like to tell something about women empowerment okay so what is that women's empowerment is a process in which women gain greater share of control over resources material human and intellectual like knowledge information ideas and financial resources like money and access to money and control over decision making in the home community society nation and to gain power and that that is from uh, bisnath and elson who worked on 1999 so according to the uh, you know country report of government of india empowerment means moving from a position of enforced powerlessness to one of power according to cambridge english dictionary empowerment means to authorize so in the context of the people they have to be authorized to have control over their lives so when applied in the context of development the particular segment of population the poor the women the vulnerable the weak the oppressed and the discriminated they have to be empowered to have control over their lives to better their socio economic and political conditions kahir his paper uh, that uh, that was in 2001 defines empowerment as the expansion in people's ability to make strategic life choices in a context where this ability was previously denied to them for women in india this suggests empowerment in several realms like personal familial economic and political so there are some basic questions that come to the mind when you talk of empowerment those are first of all can women decide with dignity and without any fear their own goals and have the freedom and capability to act towards them number 2 do they have access to you know means of production to ensure economic independence and physical security outside the house as a precondition to freedom of movement number 3 do their opinions and desires count at the level of family the society and the country then number 4 how do we provide opportunities to enhance their capabilities and number 5 does she have the right to own and enjoy property number 6 does she have freedom from the drudgeries of the laborious domestic chores and meaningless social restrictions number 7 is she able to freely participate in the development and status building of the nation number 8 does she have mastery over vocational managerial and life saving medicinal skills so if answer to all these questions uh, is negative it implies that women are not completely empowered thus women's empowerment need some basic ingredients which includes fearlessness that is implying absence of crimes against women then freedom from drudgery of laborious domestic chores economic earning and productivity ability to travel and control speed authority to take decision sharing power and property with men and a liberating education that can prepare grounds for the above so women can be empowered only if they are given education 
and made aware of their rights and hence they themselves prioritize their lives. Violence has to be completely eradicated. Eradicated from her life then and only then can the dream of empowerment becomes a reality. So women have to be given due respect in a society to have actual empowerment. So to empower women financially, a lot of initiatives have been undertaken at national and state level, like introduction of self-help groups, that is SHG, a plethora of welfare measures, but non only spending money is not enough in, to financially empower women. Basic skills and training should be given for the proper utilization of the finances as unskilled and semi-literate women are exploited everywhere. But the society having developed is still not safe for its female citizens. A woman's safety is not only her family's responsibility, but the country as well. So the, the term empowerment holds different meanings to different psyches. And this divergence, this comprehension of facts against fiction, this way of interpretation that people of various sex associations and understanding can perhaps answer this quintessential question. So women's empowerment in India is heavily dependent on many different variables that include geographical location, either it is urban or rural, educational status, social status, caste and class and age, policies on women empowerment exist at the national, state and local, that is panchayat levels uh, in many uh, sectors, including health, education, economic opportunities, gender-based violence and political participation. However, there are significant gaps between policy advancements and actual practice at the community level. So these are the big, big issues uh, that we have got in women empowerment. So they have been, uh, women have been uh, suppressed under custom and law for which man was responsible and in the shaping of which he had no hand. So woman has as much right to shape our own destiny as man has to shape his. So it is up to man to see that they enable them to realize their full status and play their part as equal of men. So that has been told by Mahatma Gandhi. And independent India for the past uh, five decades has been trying to protect women from violence and uh, discrimination and to strengthen their entitlements in the social and economic fields uh, through scores of schemes, policies and programs. So in the institutional area, independent administrative departments, development corporations and commission for women have sprung up at the center as well as in the states. Also women are movement and their network with the international community often gives forceful expression to women uh, upliftment and issues in legislature, executive and judiciary for reviewing the age-old principles of patriarchal society. Yet, the status of women from all the sections of the society is mixed and not substantially altered. So in the face of global competition, traditional economic occupations of women have withered. So in the new economic regime, the withdrawal of the activities of the state leaves the woman in cold. Further, gender blind legislation and laws are extending its coverage of shadow on women. Surprisingly, the empowerment of women is one of the central issues in the process of development of countries all over the world, not just India. So these issues of gender equality, they are an area of discussion in national and international conferences like this, then research studies, various forums, and even establishing of special departments for women welfare. 
the imperative of gender partnership in matters of development has been widely recognized and institutional mechanisms and interventions have been consciously built into the development design so i have been told uh, you know to highlight on the importance of science and technology uh, how they can improve the situation of women how they can empower uh, the women kind so that is a big issue and big issue uh, in the sense that uh, when we uh, look about our uh, you know internet connection i believe that the use of the introduction of internet in our society that has greatly contributed to the empowerment of women say suppose for security if you have woman or a lady or a girl is alone at night uh, she can use the gprs she can talk anybody through her mobile and feel safe that is a big big thing where uh, violence marks our society especially violence on women and then um, you know uh, they are given this atm cards when you are having your atm cards which is a boon of science uh, it is empowering women and every time they are as they are surfing different sorts of sites it may be it may be google it may be mintra or whatever you know uh, domestic sort of sites where they can have their goods and materials their ease of uh, you know the ease of living is definitely ascertained now science and technology offers solutions to many challenges faced by rural women they can participate contribute to you know food security by boosting crop yields reduce women's domestic and productive work by introducing labor saving technologies like the use of gases like the use of chimneys and other things this has made life easier for women who are often seen uh, busy in domestic sort of works so an increase participation of women in the rural labor market through better communications women can also benefit greatly from tools that encourage knowledge and information sharing when made available to them new and basic information and communication technologies that we call icts can help reduce women's isolation improve their bargaining power and ability to pull skills a good example of this are the community learning centers run by the self employed women's association that is seva in india which use innovations such as satellite and telecommunication to enable women to access agricultural extension soil and pest analysis and health diagnostic expertise even in rural uh, remote areas so some centers contain equipment libraries with innovative technology sharing arrangements that allow poor women to access technologies which would otherwise be unavailable to them female leaders from different villages also help to identify village demand for uh, improved certified seeds and other technologies then purchase them wholesale and ensure the rich women farmers who need them most this is a significant innovation in contexts where small and marginal farmers are usually bypassed by national extension systems so that is a uh, a uh, uh, you know very significant sort of contribution of science and technology now when you talk about uh, how many participants are there in our uh, you know uh, sector this sector of science and technology because without science and technology you cannot be rational you cannot be comfortable and you cannot be convenient as well so uh, education is a key factor Uh, in deciding the future career path of students and educational institutions are also important in their success or otherwise in training individuals 
to make a living out of what they have learned. So societal and cultural factors are the key to defining which subject a woman might choose for her education. The existence of perceptions such as men's versus women's academic disciplines choose the choice of women in early education. So arriving at a higher rate of women's presence in science and technology fields requires a thorough understanding of the barriers they face at the time skilled women enter the job market. Among the factors that have restrained women's further involvement in science and technology the three could be the most important according to me that is gender pay gap number two culture and gender inequity and number three lack of political will so political will from governments is essential for encouraging women's participation in science and technology so are they really, uh, you know, taking part in science and technology? Uh, we have got some interesting statistics as well. Uh, you know, their participation in uh, science-based institutions or like that. Say, India's, uh, let me, you know, talk about some of the statistics that we have got a thing about the engineers and the IITs. India's well-established academic institutions, they are generating about half a million engineers a year. So U.S. high-tech companies are hiring more and more high-tech professionals in India. Between 2001 and 2003, around 35,000 Indians emigrated uh, to the country to work in, uh, you know, different sort of software companies. So what we have seen that... Um, Indian women still do not have the same access to education and literacy, but primary education in India is not universal. Overall, the literacy rate for women is 39% versus 64% for men. So with fewer than 2 million internet connections in the entire country, uh, it must have increased by now. It's the statistics of fairly 20 years back. And fewer, uh, you know, still get an education in engineering. Women's representation in technical field is growing. Yes, for example, the percentage of women engineers graduating from IIT Bombay has grown from 1.8% in 1972 to 8% in 2005. In Western and Eastern countries, women are participating around 50% in science and engineering and 20 to 30% are towards pursuing doctorates. So we are still lagging behind and a fair long distance we have to, we have to go. So uh, women's education, you know, that is extremely important intrinsically as it is their human right and required for the flourishing of many of their capacities. So women work two thirds of the world's working hours. Can you believe that? So produce half of the world's food. So yet earn when it comes to the earning of money, they earn only 10% of the world's income and own what is their owning? How much are they owning? They own less than 1% of the world's property. So more than 850 million people, most of them women and children, suffer from chronic hunger or malnutrition. Women in the developing country uh, bear a heavy burden of preventable illness. Each year, more than a half a million women die. Half a million women die uh, from the uh, you know complication of pregnancy and childbirth. So when I was talking about failure of women career in science and technology, what I feel that say global also, you know, employment trends, they indicate that there are more women in the labor force now than before. Yes, our civilization is advancing. But the fact remains that 
you know, in uh, labor sector, women are increasing. So they, they have a higher unemployment rate than men. In 2003, more than 40% of all people at work globally were women. But the quality of employment by women is generally lower than men. 60% of the so-called working poor, those earning less than the poverty baseline of a dollar a day, are women. Not even a single dollar in a day. So new technologies can improve women's competitiveness in selected areas where intellectual competence supersedes physical strength. However, whether women are able to take advantage of these opportunities depends primarily on socioeconomic factors. So women have gained a fairly high level in education in quite a few countries. In some, they are better educated compared to men. Although the share varies widely by discipline, the question is to what extent women have been able to transform the empowerment provided by education into employment opportunities. The environment of employment differs from that of education. There are different issues of concern when a woman enters into a professional position. Moving up the hierarchy is a particular challenge for women as they have to compete with men. So it is quite difficult to assess career opportunities in general as career paths are rarely organized and documented. Shortage of data makes uh, any such assessment difficult. So with this constraint, one of the few feasible comparisons seems to be that of career paths at universities. We have almost all, you know, 40% girls students in all disciplines of engineering. The women faculty and employee are also around 40% in the college. The leadership of women has to be achieved, even though we have few women in the leadership position. So it is uh, amply documented that women are lost from the academic pipeline at a greater rate than their male counterparts. A study shows that an equal number of female and male students enroll at colleges, but the number of women decreases at the high, upper hierarchy of the college, starting from PhD students to assistant professor to associate to full professor. So this trend demonstrates that the so-called leaky pipeline tends to lose much more women than men on their way to higher academic status and position in the university hierarchy. The pattern of women's participation in science and technology has changed from exclusion to segregation in three major forms. The expression vertical segregation refers to high concentration of women at certain levels of the professional hierarchy and is used to describe their under or over representation in that hierarchy. For example, women may constitute about half the undergraduates in some disciplines, but they represent a small fraction at the, at the professor level. So what are the ways out? I mean, I should be coming uh, to the conclusion of my speech. First of all, women should be encouraged to bring uh, their vision and leadership, knowledge and skills, views and aspirations into the development agenda from the grassroots to you know, international levels. Science and technology brings economic growth and well-being to people. And it is not only the empowerment of women through science and technology, but also the enrichment of science and technology through women's participation. It is not the concern of one nation only, not ours, but there are many players and stakeholders in the aim to reach this millennium goal. We just hope that women become empowered at 100% and become equal in men so that both of them may work side by side for a better world of today. So it is necessary to recognize 
that the participation of women in science and technology is no longer simply an issue of gender equity. It, it is also an issue that should be considered in national economic development. Women are both consumers and producers. They can make a difference if they are involved and considered in economic development plans. With science and technology at the, at the heart of economic development, women's participation in science and technology is therefore an essential part of economic development strategies. In order to arrive at a greater involvement of women in economic development through their participation in science and technology, systematic and coherent policies are required such that gender issues are brought into the mainstream at all levels, including education, employment, and governance. New technologies could assist in this endeavor if promoted. Information technology is empowering women by making education accessible and raising women's skills. There are, however, barriers preventing the full engagement of women in science and technology. That is the lack of interest among women to pursue engineering and technology related disciplines at universities indicates culture and influences that often regard these fields as the preserve of men. This is wrong. So even these, those women who pursue higher education, higher qualifications in engineering and technology, they face discrimination. In many places where women are equally competent, the man is given precedence in employment opportunities as he is regarded as the breadwinner. So such discrimination may range from unfairness at the point of hiring, salary gaps, and bias in promotion opportunities. So the role of educational institutions is indispensable in promoting cultural change. Government's role, that is very, very crucial in bringing about these changes. Though provide, I mean, through providing an uh, adequate social infrastructure and policy environment which facilitate women's entry into the fields of science and technology. This could include measures to support the professional, personal, and family needs of women through their education, career developments, and their and their employment. Now, the uh, that is a very important sector. As you, as you keep on telling, when the government is uh, you know earnest, we can do a lot. So, therefore, the exact nature of policies and measures to achieve this aim they will differ depending on the cultural environment and the level of economic development. Now, therefore, from a very early age, a girl child must be encouraged, must be encouraged to pursue science and technology. It's not that, say, even in our colleges also in Tripura, we can see the, you know, the fields of education, political science, uh, you know, philosophy, Sanskrit, then mm, English, Bengali, they are being pursued by most of the girls but we find very few girls in uh, science streams. So uh, this uh, is a failure. This is a failure in terms of our, uh, you know, earnestness uh, to bring more girl childs into the mainstream. And uh, the, the potential of science and technology, its sector is huge, is uh, unlimited, in fact. So as the days are progressing, we are watching that how science and technology is changing women's lives also. Now, if you go to rural sector, also you do not find women are, you know, they are um, burning woods uh, to cook on like that. They're using uh, cooking gases and all sorts of, you know, uh, technological appliances are being used. So this has made their life uh, easier and comfortable. Now the question is, now the question is how to, how to bring them more and more into our mainstream. How one day we can say, that uh, you know in every sector there is true equality and there are certain sort of constraints even in society our attitude has to be changed uh, regarding women and uh, the most important thing is encouragement when they are encouraged they can do wonders and we have seen in 
right now we're watching in different sort of fields they are in uh, air force they are in uh, you know um, space science uh, lots of girls are moving so they are doing unthinkable even by the male uh, people so therefore i feel that uh, science and technology uh, in the days to come they'll be changing the future of women given provided we must change our own attitude and environment and once again i thank all of you the organizers uh, that you are doing that uh, you know, indian science congress cha dharmanagar chapter a big thank you to the dharmanagar college degree government degree college dharmanagar uh, because of you it has been oh, possible yeah. So, um, uh, lots of thanks to all of you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Mm -hmm. My uh, pleasure. Thank you, sir, for a uh, such an informative session, and it was a nice experience to hear you, sir. And hopefully, we will meet you again in some other platform. So, thanks once again, sir. Thank you. Sir. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. तो जो देखो ये की तरफ से देखो सर ये बंद करने नीचे वीडियो नाउ वे आर विद अस one more resource person uh, or you can say the invited speaker of this program dr soikot chatterji he is a very renowned personality in the field of physical education he did his uh, mped ugc net mphil phd diploma in nutrition and health education pg diploma in yoga pg diploma in higher education so he is very qualified and Uh, means uh, uh, master of all he published three books and more than 100 papers in national and international journals he was the uh, means bengal team representative of west bengal team in senior national cycling championship so multi talented personality and hope uh, we will be amazed to hear him sir so please sir you oh, can please, proceed sir, with you your can proceed with thank you your, thank you Ankur, if you please uh, share my PPT. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. I'm trying. I'm trying. What a wonderful topic. What a wonderful topic. What a wonderful topic. Hey, even also. Hey, even also. No, even also. No, even also. Am I audible, Ankan? Am I yes, audible? Sir, yes, audible, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. You are audible, sir. Is I'm, my voice? I'm trying to connect. Trying to connect. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. should i start now hello hello
Halo. Sorry to sorry to okay dear okay for the inconvenience it's okay अंकन, हेलो, शुड आई स्टार्ट? Okay, sir. Am I audible, sir? Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? The presentation is not uh, coming. One minute, sir. One minute, sir. Okay, okay. You you take your time. No problem. Okay. 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 Okay, sir. Now, just yesterday, we celebrated Holi, the festival of colors throughout India. So at the very outset, I'd like to convey my greetings, wishes of the festival of colors to everybody i'd like to convey my pranam to the seniors all in this platform of iska and uh, like to convey my heartfelt thanks to the dharmanagar college all the faculty members well wishers of the college for giving me an opportunity to share some of my views of views and ideas on this beautiful occasion uh, today my topic is men paving the path through art culture science and technology and women judiciously pursuing the same for their empowerment uh, you know uh, i prepared a topic uh, which is somehow of uh, uh, a different taste actually whenever we get some opportunity to speak something about women empowerment you know uh, we uh, go in some sort of uh, discrimination we go in some sort of in some uh, you know uh, unhealthy uh, altercations we always think that uh, for the uh, lack of development of women 
the men are only responsible like these sorts of men's uh, ideas come crop up in the mind of women as well as men uh, so in this presentation i'd like to wave away this sort of discrepancy between men and women and uh, rather present a very healthy congenial relationship between men and women marching towards development prosperity of the society and uh, uh, i'd like to focus on the evolution of women empowerment or rather development of women through or with the help of men uh, i doesn't want to when i prove men as the supreme neither the women just i try to depict uh, you know the very healthy relationship between the producers the reproducers women and the mm, you know the path making men men always played a leading role so far development enrichment is concerned and women uh, always pursued with men you know huh? like this way only with a very equal participation of men and women the society flourished this thing i tried to show in my presentation and uh, uh, you know uh, just try to present the evolution of women empowerment how men and women together march towards empowerment and uh, the present society what is the status of men and women so far science technology art culture is concerned now i think uh just uh, i like to start uh this is the prologue from the very ancient age uh women in indian society are concerned as mothers giving birth to offsprings and men playing pivotal role in enrichment of the human folk though the scenario is not same in the present era when men and women are equally taking part in development of human society yet so far the evolution of women empowerment is concerned role of men is truly praiseworthy men with their creative ideas paved the path for women empowerment and motherly women evolved with the pass passage of time you know uh, in the earlier times men were little bit uh, leaders like Uh, they played the leading role but women also never stayed behind apart from from their uh, pregnancy child birth they also equally took part in the development of the society through their uh, you know uh, aptitude abilities and hard work now uh, just see how men uh, lead played the leading role in the development of women we all know ishwar chandra vidyasagar he was the keen advocate of education for women he rightly viewed education as the primary way for women to emancipate themselves themselves from all the social oppression they had to face at the time throughout bengal he opened 35 women's schools and succeeded in enrolling 1300 students you just see the era the time when vidyasagar came with his leading role in women education if vidyasagar would have not taken such leading role in women education i think women would have been much more behind so far the context of education is concerned like this way vidyasagar 
played a very significant role in women education in introduction of women education in india raja ram mohan roy you all know and uh, what uh, determining role he played in the social development of women he played a significant role in the abolition of sati daha pratha which was the biggest cause for women in the indian society you know next the political emp empowerment political empowerment is very important for both men and women and see uh, we can see in the picture uh, please give the next slide please ankur uh, the picture shows nehru with indira gandhi and we all know jawaharlal nehru uh, one of the biggest leaders we had in our country huh? and uh, in his guidance developed indira gandhi and indira gandhi also proved herself as one of the greatest leaders in the international political edifice you know huh? so th this way i tried to um, prepare a very healthy relationship between men and women how the men showed the path of empowerment enrichment and how females followed that path and enriched th themselves huh? so uh, this is also a wonderful um, relationship how the father prepared his daughter and uh, as a very high quality political leader next slide please now i try to depict here the theme of cultural enrichment cultural empowerment this is also a wonderful uh, you know um, area where people can explore themselves people can enrich themselves people can strengthen themselves through this cultural enrichment you know uh, women can empower themselves throughout if a woman gets culturally empowered she gets economic empowerment social empowerment as well like this way cultural em empowerment enrich a woman in every aspect you know and we all know ravindranath tagore he uh, is uh, well known as the kavi guru or vishwa kavi and the proponent of the, the world class poetry bengali poems not only poetry he was a wonderful composer of music and literature and with these uh, cultural aspects got transferred to many women the cultural ideas of ravindranath tagore got transferred to women and the women got enriched with the help of those cultural ideas of tagore you know uh, here i tried to uh, present uh, one of the eminent vocalist of ravindra sangeet suchitra mitra she developed herself as an exponent in the field of ravindra sangeet and uh, uh, she was uh, she remained a professor and the head of ravindra sangeet in the department at the ravindra bharti university for 
many years you know this is cultural empowerment enrichment and getting transferred from one person to another like this way the cultural development took place and uh, in hand in hand uh, in mutual collaboration of males and females the ultimate development of society took place this is also one of the uh, areas of cultural development uh, you can see in the picture pandit pandit ravi shankar was an india indian sitar genius and a composer he became the world's best known exponent of north indian classical music in the second half of the 20th century and influenced many other musicians throughout the world shankar was awarded india's highest civilian honor the bharat ratna in 1999 and below we can see the picture of uh, ankan please give the next slide please uh, just below ravi shankar we can see the picture of anushka shankar his, his daughter she also acquiring uh, following her father she also acquired expertise in sitar playing and uh, developed herself as a master in world music so this way uh, i tried to develop a wonderful relationship between men and women and uh, marching towards development together empowerment in the field of sport being a professional in the field of physical education i cannot uh, go apart from this uh, sports and games also uh, and uh, this you know this empowerment in the sport field is also very essential for not only men but also women women can attain every sort of empowerment may be economic may be political may be uh, social all sorts of development or empowerment can be attained from the sport field and here we can see the picture of dronacharya awardee athletic coach virender punia and he is the husband of uh, the olympian athlete krishna punia and who krishna punia she is a standing mla of rajasthan you know just due to his political uh, due to his career in the sport field due to his uh, wonderful performance in the sport field she attained political power also she achieved a leadership platform in the field of politics also just see how uh, one empowerment helps in attaining empowerment in the other area and here is also a mutual relationship between wife and husband and with this wonderful relationship both acquired eminence excellence in their areas or definitely in the enrichment of the society empowerment of human folk you know science and technology also uh, we know that charles babbage is one of the eminent scientists of the world who discovered computer and uh, just um, in the present days there are a number of women professionals or rather women computer experts computer scientists working very successfully in the society in the field of information and communication technology here i just uh, cited one eminent scientist in the field of it kavita bala is an indian computer scientist and academic she is a professor in computer science at cornell university us 
and has been appointed the dean of the faculty of computing and information science you just see in science and technology also the inventors may be men but the women are also women are also not lagging behind they are fighting and uh, attained mm, they are uh, moving forward you know uh, through their eminence expertise and no more lagging behind and uh, with their expertise in the field of science and technology proved to be eminent scientists in the area in medical science also uh, i just uh, tried to uh, put here one of the uh, very important uh, equipment we use in medical science nowadays mri we all know multiple x ray images they this equipment scientific equipment was invented by godfrey hausfeld Uh, who re received a nobel prize for medicine in 1979 and women are nowadays expert in the field of medical science they are also working very successfully in using the machineries and also uh, coming up with lots of innovations and inventions in this area also empowerment in the battlefield this is also the area where women are not lagging behind you know uh, very initially the men trained the women in the battlefield how to use the weaponry armory all these things but you see just the picture at the extreme right in extreme right picture you see women of indian army training the russian soldiers you just see what level of expertise the women armed forces uh, officers has attained that they are training the russian soldiers in a joint ex exercise between the indian and the russian army so in the battlefield also so far the uh, warfare is concerned women are not lagging behind they got trained by the males but acquired expertise eminence and developed themselves as wonderful powerful soldiers in the field of astronomy also you see rakesh sharma became the first indian citizen to travel into space and uh, we all know kalpana chawla one of the eminent indian origin astronauts means here also in the field of space research in the field of astronomy also women are not lagging behind though they got maybe got their the ideas or aspirations or motivation from male counterpart just i'd like to wrap up here from the very dawn of human civilization women has been walking towards empowerment holding the hands of men through ages women evolved to be as men's immediate partner in the world of development and prosperity in the present era women are no longer caregivers only but innovators as well women have lot to contribute in enrichment of human society time has come when we should stop thinking about women empowerment but rather consider them as already empowered there should not be any distinction between men and women in the realm of maturity and expansion of a nation a cordial collaboration of men and women is the result of the overall development of a society you know like this way <clears throat> i tried to um, put a question before you all after the uh, my uh, discussion that uh, does we may um, do we uh, uh, or rather how far uh, this uh, term woman empowerment should 
continue how far this women empowerment term should continue i think the time has come when we should not think of women empowerment any further or rather uh, think of it many discussion has taken place uh, related to women empowerment i think we should not uh, further continue with this empowerment empowerment rather we should think women as already empowered i think uh, then only women will get a equal status in the society they will not think themselves as inferior to men and uh, i think there will be much more uh, you know speedy development in the society to come so with this few words i um, here by uh, thanking all of you wishing you all a very uh, healthy uh, stay i am concluding my talk here so thank you so, sir thank you sir. for the it was nice it was experience nice. to hear you sir thank you uncle maybe, maybe i have to I have mute to mute so so thanks a lot sir thanks a lot it sir. was a wonderful was experience a wonderful and, experience and, and uh, we are enriched uh, with enriched through with your through lecture, your sir. lecture and sir and hopefully we will meet again we'll in some other platform some other platform so thanks for so accepting thanks our request thank, thank, thank you sir it's my privilege ankur thank you sir and then we can watch now we will move towards the next presentation which will be which will be given by uh, surujit pathak sir he is currently working as a professor at chittanad academy of research and education kalambakkam chennai he has received his phd in geology from the university of kalyani west bengal in 2007 and completed his post doctoral training at the university of alam alabama usa so uh, i would like to welcome you sir before that i would like to request all the other uh, remaining invited speakers and this lecture will be followed by the lecture of dr k v jaya charan sir so be ready sir after that uh, uh, the last lecture will be given by our dr Uh, nurul alam sir so be ready sir so now i would like to request i am audible now i would like to request professor uh, surjit patak sir to proceed with his presentation ankur am i audible yes sir you are audible so can okay, you present sir. by yourself sir the ppt uh, uh, or you want me to present can you please uh, or i can try to share just one second if you want me to present then i can present also share just one second if i can share my ppt then it will be good for me to change sir your voice voice is very low sir i think so voice is low. it is clear but hello now, clear, uh, but now 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 audible now voice okay yes. Yes, sir. A bit louder. Yes. Okay. Okay. Sir. Maybe I am in the headphone. That is the reason. It's looking a little bit less. Okay. No problem. Anyway, uh, Ankur, can you please share my PPT because it is difficult. Uh, I am first time uh, okay. using Streamyard. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. it will take time two more minutes okay then not sure
yes sir so you can proceed with your presentation okay thank you wankan so okay. uh, good afternoon to everyone present here it gives me a great pleasure to be part of this webinar on the topic science and technology for sustainable development with women empowerment but my talk is little bit uh, different uh, from the present title uh, but i will try to say something about difference in the disease portrayal of men and women i look i would like to thank all the dignitaries and the organizing committee of the indian science congress association dharmanar uh, dharmanar and the department of chemistry and physical education for this wonderful opportunity special thanks to dr shuman odhikari for inviting me to this webinar today i would like to deliver a short talk on topic of biomarker discovery in primary and metastatic colon cancer here i would like to discuss current advances in the field of biomarker analysis especially in colon cancer next slide ankur can you please run next slide can you uh, uh do our slide show ankan can you do the slide show ankan am i audible okay yes sir you are audible you can proceed sir you can okay, okay. you are audible sir okay so colon cancer one of the most prevalent cancer in a uh, western world but now it is one of the main uh, reason for cancer related death in india also uh, it's developed through accumulation of hereditary and sporadic changes actually and a global incidence of the colon cancer is 1.8 million cancer every year the colon cancer in indian population uh, recent indexes are saying that colon cancer just one second i have one connection little bit okay okay so recent studies have found that early stage of colon cancer disease had significantly higher survival than those with the advanced stage so i hope you all know about the different stages of the cancer like stage 1 2 3 4 4 and uh, furthermore those aged above 40 years had longer survival compared to young patients so this is the this is a different trend in terms of cancer because generally we know if the age is higher survival rate is lower but in case of colon cancer if the age is higher survival rate is more compared to if the young patient receive that disease or somehow diagnose the disease they have survival rate is very low for the young patient so next slide please uh, so stages of colorectal cancer there are different stages stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 and stage 4 so stage 1 the cancer is contained only the inner layer of the rectum and there is a no spread to adjacent lymph node so it is generally we call it is a primary cancer because the cancer is confined to the origin in localization is origin where cancer originate so stage 1 and 2 Uh, the is a not metastasis to other organs so and it is easily curable we have now a lot of different treatment avenues so we can treat the cancer stage 1 and stage 2 and we can treat the cancer but uh, there is little bit critical in if the cancer reaches to the stage 3 and stage 4 because stage 3 and stage 4 cancer migrate to different uh, Uh, organs, different other tissues. So you have to uh, use a lot of chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and different other treatment options. 
but their survival rate is poor. Generally, if the cancer reaches the, the colon cancer reaches the stage three or four, the survivability comes below five years. So, uh, you, in the picture, you can see that stage stage four, you can see the tumor growth is large and that stage is uh, that migrated to the other organs. So, on the next slide, please, the normal adenoma to carcinoma pathway because you can easily see, uh, on the next slide, please. Can you please uh, give the next slide, Ankan? Yes. So, this is the adenocolon that developed the terminal colon. There is a no erosion, nothing, no polyp, nothing is developed. But the certain uh, things, you can get mushroom-like polyp developed. Okay. It is the chronoscopy picture. You can see the certain uh, picture. There is a mushroom-like polyp developed. So, that is the development of the adenoma. And uh, you know, the most important thing of the colon carcinoma, it is developed because of our junk food. It is mostly uh, develop the lifestyle disease, one kind of lifestyle. If we, as much as we are going to the Western lifestyle, we are developing this kind of disease. Because in Western population, uh, most number of the people are affected, the cancer is a colon carcinoma. So like a raw meat, uncooked vegetables, uncooked food, that is one of the main reasons for development of the colorectal carcinoma. Then uh, this is the, Third picture is the cancer. You can uh, develop the cancer. It is a malignant stage. So you can easily see the, by the pictures how the cancer is developed. And another good thing of this carcinoma is uh, uh, another things. Good thing things. This cancer is treatable. If you diagnose early, this cancer completely curable. But when so the rule is you have to go after 35 or 30, 40 years, you have to do regular chronoscopy to check your bowel, your colon, so that if any kinds of growth is there, immediately you have to go for the surgery. Because this generally when we detect through a normal mechanism, this colon carcinoma, that time the oral blood started coming and that time one of the last stage of the cancer generally when the stage four or late stage four it reached, that time only the blood start coming through the stool and it is almost end of the carcinoma stage. So there is a chances of survival is very less. And another thing is of that carcinoma is this carcinoma affects male more than female. Like I, one of previous slide I told that carcinoma affects more younger people, like same way it affects more male male are more infected with this kind of cancer compared to the female population so next slide please so what is the risk factor risk factor related to adenomatous polyposis hereditary uh, polyps then previous colorectal cancer age more than 50 years the people if they have age more than 50 years Generally, they have a chance of getting the infection with the colorectal cancer. Then inflammatory bowel disease like ulcerative colitis or Crohn disease that always give the rise to the development of the colon cancer. Then poor diet, obviously increased fat, red meat, red meat and uh, less fibrous food give the chances of the colon cancer. Then uh, diabetes mellitus, acromegaly, like this kind of disease is also related with the colon cancer. So what are the treatment options available? Treatment is first screening, diagnosis. One screen is colonoscopy, one step or two step. And uh, then two step screening is you have to check the fecal blood and colonoscopy. And uh, treatment option is available. The best treatment option is surgery. So the colon where the polyp or tumor is there, you have to reset that part five centimeter be, uh, before and five centimeter after. After the uh, uh, removal, there is a two types of uh, radiation therapy available, pre-operative uh, radiotherapy and post-operative radiotherapy and uh, treatment with the chemotherapy. So, and you can do also uh, chemo and radiotherapy together that is known as the neoadjuvant therapy. Next slide. So, now the question comes, about my talk. Uh, my talk is biomarker discovery in colon cancer. So why we need the biomarker? 
So before my talk, I already uh, discussed that when colon cancer diagnosed, that time it is too late. That time we don't have any treatment option available that uh, we can cure the person who is infected, who is affected with the colon cancer. But if we diagnose this cancer before, it is completely curable. So stage one, stage two, even if stage three also we did it, that is completely curable. But the problem is your body will not give you any sign of that the person is developing the colon cancer. But in Western world, there is a one option. Western world, they have in the job, they have the health insurance, in health insurance, above 35 years of age, colonoscopy every year is must. But in India, we most of the place, we are not still heard the name of colonoscopy at all. We are not doing the colonoscopy. So when if we do regularly colonoscopy, there is a chance we can detect the disease. But now we don't have any chance. So what we need, we need some of the regular biomarker. Biomarker means some of the marker through which we can identify if there is any cancer is inside our body or not. It's growing or not. So that may be through the blood, that may be through the saliva, that may be through the stool, whatever, or that may be through the biopsy when we get it in the biopsy for other reason, we can check some of the marker. But marker is what? Marker may be protein, marker tip may be genes, marker may be DNA, so or marker may be microRNA or disease progression things which can give a like uh, us a clue that already the colon cancer developed or not like fetal portal blood with the blood the with the stool the blood is coming that is a marker but that's a late stage marker so in our lab we are particularly interested to know any early stage biomarker is there available or not or we can identify any early stage biomarker so that routinely we can diagnose the colon cancer next slide so biomarkers different types <coughs> that pathophysiological biomarker ecg uh, um, uh, pap smear isc uh, uh, hematological staining like different types of biomarkers are applicable so in our lab next slide please in our lab we are interested on the micro rna this is spe uh, special kind of rna that RNA is small in size, like 18 to 22 nucleotides long RNA. And that RNA has a special role. That RNA, because we know the central dogma of molecular biology, DNA to RNA, RNA to protein. But this micro RNA stop the translation process. This micro RNA stop RNA to protein uh, synthesis process. So this micro RNA not allow the cells to produce the protein and this protein is the biological weapon because in our body whatever function was done is done by done by the protein molecule only so but microRNA stop this protein molecule synthesis so there are next slide there are different types of microRNA available like oncomid metastatic microRNA tumor suppression microRNA so and already some of the microRNA are well established in cancer but in colon cancer, still there are not uh, uh, that much well established. And in science only, it is not like that some work has already done by some other lab. So we are not able to do it. We have to do it to give the more validity. Because there are already one microRNA established in, uh, in the science community that late 7 microRNA. There are different types of microRNA available. But we are working more and more. So to know how this microRNA is working or already what others people reported that is true or not so that is we can believe or not so in our lab especially we are working on the tumor suppression microRNA as well as oncomamin microRNA and different protein biomarkers to early detection of the colon cancer so next slide uncle next slide please so this is some of our publication from our group we are working for microRNA last almost uh, 20 years. 
uh, 15, 15 years, 15 to 17 years we are working because I started working in uh, PhD in uh, Kalani. I did my PhD with Dr. Shumun together. We are a hospital mate also. Then I moved to US and then we work in Edo. Uh, so in there all the time I worked on the microRNA and uh, in colon cancer. So we have several publication on this particular field that how microRNA is working and how microRNA we can use as a disease portrayal or disease diagnosis. So next slide. Uncle, next slide. So this is some, um, uh, some more publication from our group. So I will not go through it completely because if you need any kind of uh, information regarding thing, just let me know so I can uh, uh, discuss so tip in this slide so some more uh, some some publication i showed what we have done already in the this field so now i will discuss about my today's uh, presentation about uh, microarray 122 and ag on oncogene how they are interplaying and how they are developing the colon cancer and if we can use any one of this for future diagnostic purpose this project is funded by the acrb it's a core research grant, so it's funded to me. So we are working on that particular project. So AG1 and microRNA one to two interaction. So what is AG1? AG1 is a protein molecule. So we can say that is a uh, particularly uh, oncoprotein. Oncoprotein means we all know that oncoprotein is protein which is overexpressed in the cancer. So this is one kind of protein which is expressed on different types of other cancer, but not in colon cancer. So we are interested that what is the role of this protein protein because it is already almost established uh, as a protein biomarker. So what is the role of this protein marker in colon? And then we are working on a liver specific microRNA because liver is some, one of the main sign, uh, site of biogenesis. So liver specific microRNA one to two. So so here our uh, uh, our plan is to see find an interaction between an oncoprotein and a tumor suppression microRNA. So we didn't choose both, which is upregulated. So one will be upregulated and other one way one will be downregulated. So microRNA 122 is a liver specific microRNA and H1 is not at all expressed in the we before us. No one showed that H1 expressed in the colon. So we are the one of the first we are working on this field. So H1 and microRNA 122. Next slide. So already I discussed that microRNA 122 is a tumor suppressor that is regulated with the many pathways, but no one till now no uh, report on AG1 relationship with microRNA 122. But microRNA 122 is regulated with the P53, C meat oncogene, HIF1 alpha, HIF2 alpha, and they have a different role on different cellular cycle, cycling D, modification, and a different other pathway. So next slide, please. So here we are working, we choose three cell line. One is paired cell line, one is unpaired cell line. Paired cell line means one that known as SW480 and SW620. SW480 is a primary cell line and metastatic cell line. Primary cell line means the cell line was derived from the patient when he was a the primary stage carcinoma that same patient when he developed the metastasis that time what cell line was developed that is known as the sw 620 and it's a metastatic cell line and we used an unpaired colon cancer cell line htc 116 so these three lines cell line choose because our main goal is to find some of the uh, up or down regulated microRNA or what is the role of particular microRNA 122 in the development of the cancer. So then next slide. So we did one microarray analysis and we found that uh, microarray 122 was 1.5 fold upregulated compared to the uh, other types of microarray. Next slide, Uncle, please. Okay, so this is the uh, pictures. Uh, this uh, we did the microarray of microarray profiling. And we found that microRNA 122 is 1.5 fold. It's a lot of upregulation, this microRNA. Uh, then we choose this microRNA and we did a lot of physiological assays. We did the bioinformatics analysis also, and we found that microRNA 122 binds with the AG1 molecule. 
then we did a lot of other biological analysis to prove this microRNA is working on with the age uh, one. So we first we check all the micro, this microRNA one to two basal level expression with difference in line at age one protein basal level. We check positive control is a normal human RNA. We found in the cancer cell age one expression is high, whereas in the this is the normal cell, this is the normal cell, normal colon cell, normal lung cell, and you see this microRNA level is low. This all what was done in our lab. So, and uh, we found that different cell line compared to the other cell line, HTC116 cell line, this microRNA 1 to 2 level is high. So, we choose the HTC116 cell line for colon cancer cells for the further study. Then we check the proliferation potential. We check the different gene expression of the, the microRNA, how it is related with the different gene. So, then we did the next slide. Next slide, next slide, next, next, next. Already I spoke about this slide, next slide, next slide. Okay, so this is one of the colony forming assay. Here we are, uh, we want to check that if microRNA want to inhibit the colony formation because one of the properties of the cancer cell, they are form forming the colony and they will grow. So we see that if we uh, put the microRNA mimic that overexpress this microRNA because we are doing the cell transfection. So if we put the microRNA overexpress, the colony formation is less. Same as well, uh, if we just down regulate, we are silencing the AG1 gene, the colony formation is the less. So next slide. Onko, next slide. So this is the flow cytometric analysis. Here we prove that if we upregulate the microRNA 1 to 2, cellular apoptosis rate is high. If we down regulate the AG1 gene, cellular apoptosis is also high. So means silencing of AG1 gene and up regulation of the microRNA 1 to 2 help to cancer cell to less proliferate. So there are three hallmarks of cancer. One is proliferation, one is apoptosis and one is cancer cell migration. So we choose all the hallmarks. So cancer proliferation will be high, cellular proliferation, apoptosis will be low and migration will be high. So we check with all the three parameters through different assays like a flow cytometry, we use different techniques, flow, flow cytometry is wound healing assay. Then we use the cell proliferation, we use the different CCK kit, we use a different gene expression to prove that how this uh, uh, AG1 silencing and microRNA upregulation uh, affecting. Then next slide. Onkar, next slide, please. So this is uh, say wound healing assay. How we are forming the all also known as the stretch assay. So we are forming the stretch. Here we can check the cellular migration. How cells migrate the uh, during the metastatic process. So we found if we upregulate inside the cell from outside, if we put more microRNA one to two, we transfect the cell. The migration potential is less. So maybe uh, uh, that can work if we can in future, because we are now working on the animal models. We already worked uh, some part in human model, but we want to do more. Uh, we want to increase the patient number of patients. So I hope with the cell line data, it's a preliminary data, cell line data, we are working with animal models, which will almost, we are completing the data uh, experiments. And then we'll do the human experimentation to prove this can be a therapeutic target like microRNA 122 and microRNA uh, AG1 oncoprotein can be a target for future cancer therapy. Next slide. Onko, next slide. So this is some of the cell uh, migration assay. So I already spoke. Next slide. So that is the conclusion uh, that uh, if we uh, future if we, uh, whatever we got the results in the cell line experiment, if we can prove it to the animal model, because we are inducing animal model colon cancer, like the DSS uh, and the azoxymethane we are using. So sodium sulfate and uh, azoxymethane we are using to induce the colon cancer in mice, destroying sodium sulfate and azoxymethane. And uh, after two months, then, then we are treating with the, this we are doing the in vivo transfection. We are transiently uh, silencing the silence the gene, particularly AG1 gene in the mice. 
and we are over express the uh, micro and one to two in mice and uh, so it is ongoing experiment and now we are uh, we checked already some of the patient samples so we are i am in a hospital so we are looking for more patient samples to analyze the this expression so next slide so hopefully it will be a the therapeutic target in future next slide so this is my lab uh, this is my group we are supported with a uh, crb or producer grant we are supported with a uh, dst individually project on some data lady data project then a uh, project from italian pharmaceutical company one of the project and uh, one project from swedish uh, pharmaceutical company and link shopping university uh, this is uh, not all people are here uh, already modhumala and uh, one uh, bimla devi uh, they both completed phd under my guidance and this is the uh, our team now tadain team sushmita who is one of the sushmita and sarubala who uh, they both are did the most of the work and then ranesh also working on uh, this micro rna and then dr antara banerji uh, antara banerji pathak she is working on uh, stem cell niche and uh, colon cancer development so this is my total group and my presentation thank you all for uh, your time and your patience so thank you shon one second hello if you have any question Uh, thank you sir thank you sir it was a great experience to hear you uh, uh, we heard earlier we heard about your lectures and uh, presentations but we got the opportunity to hear you so hopefully we will uh, listen more le uh, lectures from you in the future programs so thank you for accepting our request sir thank you sir now now i would like to welcome dr k v jayachandran sir the convener of iska coaching chapter chairman akpa hi and the former dean faculty of fishery k o f o s k u f o s kochi subject expert kerala state biodiversity diversity board so i welcome you sir and we are very fortunate to have you as a invited speaker so you can proceed with your lecture sir good you am i audible to you yes sir am i audible you are and clearly you, audible yeah yes sir. Uh, I, no uh, powerpoint presentation is already sent to you you have to uh, put it from there share it from there please okay sir i am trying to connect it okay wait a second sir okay please so now it's we over to you yeah. sir you can proceed with your yeah. lecture sir thank you sir. can you can you put it in the presentation mode yes sir yes sir मेरा तो प्रेजेंटेशन मोड़े
sir you can continue with this uh, there may be some problem for slide show it is also clearly visible to all you can continue with uh, it sir fine. yeah fine fine uh, okay good afternoon uh, everybody especially the office bearers of indian science congress association and also the chapter at uh, tripura and uh, lot of invited speakers like dr An ankan sinha dr surajit and so on i heard uh, many of the lectures and found uh, many have highlighted the the women empowerment and uh, my presentation will be on women empowerment through education that is my topic uh, can we go to the next slide please now if you look at the global picture women men ratio men women ratio the world average is about 101 men 100 female women ecuador almost equal if you come to qatar it is 302 400 female women nepal it is low for 84 men 100 women are there and for india it is 108 for 100 and 100 women this is the statistics that are taken from un world population prospects can i have the next slide next slide please now if you look at the ilo report 1980 it is defined as women are 50% of the world's work hours that means they work almost half of the total volume of work but receive only 10% of the world income and own less than 1% of the world world's property this is a pathetic situation all these because of an accidental birth as woman can i have the next slide now if you look at the role of women throughout the world they play a pivotal but invisible role we all of us have experienced this they influence work men for work educate family convince people to accept changes in development can i have the next slide Next slide please. There is a Liberian saying a woman can make a rice farm all by herself but a man needs the assistance of a woman that is a situation. You know that you see in house also we do experience this social cultural status of any country is largely decided by the extent of women participation in various such programs can i have the next slide now if you segregate the activities of men and women household activities you know all these activities like cooking sweeping washing clothes fetching water collecting fuel wood making cow dung cakes and all those things next slide now take the case of child care feeding children nurturing children educating children welfare of children involving in society teaching good habits to children all these are done by women with of course some participation of men next slide please now in the agricultural activities you know most of the activities are done by women only most of the agricultural farm fields are are prepared and everything is say like digging fertilizer application irrigation harvesting sowing husking and all those things are done by uh, women but the watching activity is by male 
men. Next slide, please. In the case of pottery, also the women are taking a lead, like fetching mud and preparing for uh, pottery preparation, and all those things prepare furnace for building, burning, marketing pots. All these are done by women. Next slide. Now, you take the case of marketing of many of the materials, mostly I mean, by selling, by women, feeding cattle, milking, cattle caring, poultry caring, etc., cleaning the cattle shed, cleaning the canvas, everything is done by women. Next slide. Now, you take uh, some of the good examples of, um, of the different nations. China policy change has taken place where women got prominence 50 to 90 percent recently, yes. In Malaysia, 47 percent women are in labor force. Africa, 46 percent. Australia, 33. USA, more women are now actively coming forward. Latin America, decision makers are women. And India, about 60 to 70 percent are active laborers. Can I have the next slide? In India, you can see that almost 75 percent of working women force are engaged in agriculture. Two thirds of work and 50 percent of production they bring out. One third of remuneration in comparison to men only. 10% of property, the major reason is inadequacy of education in them. Can I have the next slide? If you take the history of women education in India, basic information of women education in India are available from the classic works like Rigveda or Brihat Aranyavapashinishat, Mimamsa, all these. Uh, Classic works reveal that there were very, very important steps taken during those days in women education. And uh, you can see most of the Veda Suktams were written by women, known as Brahma Jainis or and Rishis. Next slide. Next slide, please. Now, a colloquium at Darba by King Janaka once summoned a Darshanika Sammelan at his Darba. Eight Ajayas participated, one was a woman. The name of woman was Gargi, and Maitreyi, wife of Janaka, was a great scholar also. You can imagine the scholarliness of women at that time. Can I have the next slide? Next slide, please. <clears throat> History of women education, again, I'm continuing. Mimams have provided information about ancient women and their practical wisdom and knowledge. The book also provides the position of held by women in those days. In those days, unmarried women were compelled to undergo education and acquire dharma nidhi. Next slide, please. Next slide. Again, continued in Mimamsa, educated women voluntarily brought Aishwarya to father, husband, and home. Educated women married only educated men at that time. Moreover, she practiced dance, abhinay, music, prayojana kalagal, all those things. And women employed, enjoyed full freedom during those days. Next slide, please. This was found decreasing subsequently during these years. If you look at after that, major reason was that upper hand of sec a section of people, mostly men, tried to suppress the growth in those days. Even Buddha ashrams did not give adequate importance to men, women. At the Can I have the next slide? The chances of women educated remain primitive during the periods of Muslim dynasties. However, 
women from aristocratic families were educated example noor jahan or mumtaz they were educated next slide please next slide please now the scene started changing with the christian missionaries in india in 1838 william adams reported that the existing educational provisions are exclusively meant for educating men this is a sy systemic uh, deprivation of education for women and will result in total illiteracy in them can i have the next slide 15 years later protestant missionaries started more than 370 370 schools 86 exclusively for women and um, 1 lakh 11193 girls studied during those those times and british officers and roman missionaries were also instrumental in educating women in india next slide in the year 1849 bethune school started it is exclusively for women 1870 first training college for women was established in 1882 around 2600 primary schools 81 secondary schools 15 training schools and one college exclusively started uh, exclusively for women and uh, that all institutions came into existence during that time next slide please next ah uh, now the history if you, if you look at the first commission on education was started constituted in the year 1882 that is for the upliftment of women the report made emphasis on the imp importance of education for women and recommended for spending more money in this regard a number of institutions started increasing subsequently next slide around 1902 the number of institutions in the country was increased to 112 colleges 467 secondary schools 5628 primary schools a total of 4 lakh 47470 girls acquire education through this next slide now the new schemes were started implement implementing in the country now like increased transport facilities competitions awarding honors introducing financial assistance next slide the first english medium school Central Hindu School was started in the year 1904 by Mrs. Annie Besant. First Medical College, the Lady Harding College, was started in 1916. First Women University (SMDT) was established in the year 1916 at Delhi. Twelve Arts Colleges, four Professional Colleges were started during that time. Next slide. Next slide. two world wars actually affected the women education in, in the world throughout during this time the national council for women was established in india during 1925 next slide next slide please <clears throat> if you look at the history again during 1921 to 47 you can see that there was enormous increase in the number of schools arts and science colleges professional colleges and so on technical schools and so on for educating women next slide so educating a boy means educating a single man while educating a girl means educating a family in kerala the enrollment of girl students constitute about 100% next slide This is a picture in 1991, where the percentage of women education throughout the country in different states. Next slide. You can see that in 2018, the men and Indian uh, or an Indian are 81.5 percent and women 64.6 percent, with a gap of 16 point. 
नाइन परसेंट कैन आई नेक्स्ट स्लाइड यू कैन सी दैट द रोल ऑफ वुमेन इन डिसीजन मेकिंग यू कैन सी दैट नाउ वर इज द लाइक अ मेजर रोल लाइक फूड एरियाज ऑफ फूड एजुकेशन ऑफ चिल्ड्रन क्लोथिंग हेल्थ मैरिज savings and purchase all these women has got a say nowadays in our day to day activities next slide all these have happened through education only education helped in all these ways like cultural improvement read write and communication high level of learning high level of thinking systematic life assuming leadership keep connected with people next slide next slide please caring of children nurturing children better way of guiding family improving standard of living all these things acquired through education of women next slide next slide the importance continues that the women when educated will promote sustainable aqua agriculture aquaculture harvesting sustainable post harvest programs equitable distribution of resources speedy access to new technologies action on food security participation in all levels of official uh, matters next slide employment uh, employment generation and entrepreneurship ensures policy formulation ensures key role in decision making ensures control over population growth ensures check of child labor and so on next slide i may conclude that education is the cornerstone of women's empowerment because it enables them to respond to opportunities to challenge their traditional roles and to challenge their lives educating women benefits the whole of society it has more significant impact on poverty alleviation and development next slide give better education to women to achieve food security livelihood security peace and prosperity next slide thank you over to ankan so thank you sir it was really a surprising element for us to hear you and it was a such a nice experience and this is my first time to hear got the opportunity to hear you sir and uh, thanks again for delivering such a informative presentation in front of us thank you sir thank you for the the, the, the opportunity thank you huh? Huh. so i would like to request all the invited speaker to be uh, on the back stage as we are going to start after this uh, presentation we are going to start the interaction session with the participants so uh, i would like to request all the participants uh, invited speaker to be on the back stage <laughs> now we have with us dr nurul alam choudhury sir uh, assistant professor department of chemistry nagaland university earlier we heard uh, his lecture a bit but due to some technical reason we are not able to continue his presentation but we got the opportunity again to hear him and i would like to convey him all the best uh, as we are having the poor connectivity uh, hopefully we will finish it off this time so all the best sir thank you sir thank you uh, dr sina and uh, yeah after this interruption let's uh, come back again 
So let me straight go to my slides. Yes, sir. Okay, so now I can't read this one. It's not working. Yes, so good friend to all of you. Uh, yes, sir. My audible, if you can kindly let me know. So the key of my presentation is BS. Funding opportunities for men in science. And so, as we know, ST was Department of Science and Technology is a uh, department under uh, your... the government of mm -hmm. India. Okay. In, any difficulty? No, sir. It's okay now. Is it okay? You can continue. Okay, okay, okay. So, let me go to here to let me go to for my acha. Let me go to now. So, can you please see my slide? Yes, sir. We can see your slide, sir. You can proceed, sir. So, this so your voice is breaking, sir. If it is okay, this is not the one I am he is trying. He is trying. So, and uh, so now the scientific programs supported by ST are follows science and engineering research technology development international science and technology cooperation so science and technology right. for socio economic program technology missions division program <clears throat> now let me go to now here see that uh, we can see that the one is actually of relevance for today is the women's science program. Now, why do you need it? Because we have seen in our study that uh, women uh, have some you know, kind of, you know, we have a skewed uh, gender ratio. The uh, compared to 1,000 males, we have a lesser number of we, uh, females. For various social regions and so and moreover the women face some extra responsibilities like you know child birth child care and all these things so those uh, responsibilities affect their career uh, to a great extent to make uh, to cover to compensate that one government of india is planning to give some uh, support 
to to empower the women folk okay so to to practically implement uh, the women empowerment government of india has launched a program called gati that is gender advancement for transforming institutions it was launched by honorable president of india on february 28 2020 the objective is to achieve gender advancement in science and technology area at institutional level under this scheme women scientists are encouraged to pursue research in frontier areas of science and engineering secondly study problems of society societal relevance and thirdly take up science and technology based internship followed by self employment now coming to the uh, there are three categories of fellowships under this uh, scheme number 1 women scientist scheme a number 2 women scientist scheme b and number 3 women scientist scheme c so under women sci women scientist scheme a research in basic and applied science is covered under wsb interventions scientific and technological interventions for societal societal benefit is covered and the third one that is wsc gives internship in intellectual property rights ips for the self empower employment of women now these research grants are available only for indian citizens now coming to what who are eligible for this kind of research schemes so number one is that it is for women in science and technology domain to explore the possibility of re entry into profession secondly for those women who are having a break in their career because of the reasons that i have mentioned and thirdly it is for those women to the age requirements age of 27 years and a maximum age of 57 years are eligible and uh, for these schemes additional relaxation of c s t now some more details about these fellowships w o qualifications and and first qualification that is phd in basic science or applied science or md or equivalent degree the total amount of fellowship is 55000 plus hra hra and over applications that is mphil is msc in basic or applied science or mbbs One thousand project is twenty lakhs.
the that is phd in basic or applied science or md or equivalent degree the amount of fellowship is 35000 for mphil mtech m pharma mvsc or equivalent d for msc in basic or applied science kind of support that are covered under the project amount so <clears throat> this project is for 3 years wos and wsb is for a period of 3 years and it covers number one fellowship of the applicant number two cost of small equipments number 3 consumables number 4 travel and number 5 contingencies in addition to this five there is a provision for institutional overhead charges now let us come discuss a little more detail of these schemes one by one first one is women scientist scheme a so this scheme is for women scientists and technologist for pursuing research in basic or applied sciences in frontier areas of science and engineering that means one can go to a deep uh, research you know depth of research for any particular selected topics in a particular discipline so this is for pure research it has no component of thinking about going to society and some other things so pure research there is the coming under the category of wosa now what are the disciplines covered number 1 is physical and mathematical sciences number 2 category is chemical sciences number 3 is life sciences number 4 earth and atmospheric atmospheric sciences number 5 is engineering technology now what is the last date of application this scheme is open throughout the wsb focuses on projects related to science and technology interventions for societal benefit so here the focus is societal benefit so here the candidate is not expected is to use the now second is that uh, how can it be done then secondly let so this is the kind of basic for solving problems of society now coming to the third category that is wos there may be some technical problem get up get up there may be some technical problem uh, nurul sir we are trying to contact you yes please sir some interruption sir there so, i start no problem sir you have to start the ppt again as there is no option showing for ppt start back no,
take your time sir no problem skin that is a skin that provides platform to women scientists and technologies for pursuing a research in basic or applied so what are the scientific there are five ski uh, disciplines number 4 art and environmental sciences and number 5 is engineering technology so and what is the last date to apply for this scheme is that there is no last date it is open throughout the year a candidate can apply any time in the year so next is women scientist scheme b WSB focuses on projects related to science and technology interventions for social benefit so here the focus is on social benefit the this is done by way of development of viable technology or technique secondly lab to lab lab to land technology transfer its adaptation and scaling up now what about the third scheme wosc it is being implemented by an organization called council called tifec that is patent Fel felicitating center for technology information forecasting and assessment council now what is the aim of this it aims to train women in the field of intellectual property rights for a period of 1 year to develop a pool of women scientists geared up or equipped with creating protecting and managing intellectual property in india now it provides hands on a training on different aspects of iprs that is patent search know how drafting filing trademarks trade secrets copyrights etc and thirdly it is done in association with various knowledge partners such as law firms knowledge processing organizations that is kpos companies and government agencies now if we want to summarize this one this schemes provides empowerment of women in science and technology field and there are three schemes under this wosa wsb and wsc wos a provides funding for research in basic or applied science wsb provides funding for science to society transformation and wsc provides financial support for training in the field of iprs so that the women scientists and technologists can become self reliant in their career so <clears throat> with this i conclude uh, this uh, information i have taken from sorry the proposals are submitted online for uh, after some preparation of the scheme this can be submitted online in the dst portal okay so for this the candidate has to register and after submission one hard copy needs to be submitted to dst new delhi so source of information is mostly from dst website okay these are the two portals i have referred to 
and lastly and not the least i think all the organizers for organizing this very useful web conference especially i am thankful to my collaborator and friend dr suman adhikari for giving me this opportunity i thank you all for hearing listening patiently thank you all again so it's over to thank dr sina thank you sir uh sir you have to stop your sharing first for the ppt stop the sharing yes now it's okay so thank you sir for such a nice deliberation of your presentation and uh, it was it was means uh, a wonderful experience to hear you uh, uh, no problem we are facing some technical problems other than that it was a dream come true for me i heard your name from my colleague dr suman adhikari and it's uh, just like that it was wonderful experience to hear you sir thank you sir and uh, you have to be on the backstage if there will be some questions from you for you then you have to uh, interact with the participants sir so thank you once again sir now before going for the interaction session i would like to instruct you all uh, the participants that Uh, after the completion of interaction session you will get during the vote of thanks you will get the feedback link you will get the feedback link if you want to achieve the certificate or get the certificate then you must fill up that feedback uh, link for getting the certificate and which you will get after the interaction session so we are going to start the interaction session we have few of the questions means uh, 10 to 11 questions by phone or by messages or by uh, youtube uh, text but due to the time constraint we will read out only four, four questions which are asked by different participants first question asked by litan malakar to K, uh, dr kv jay shankar sir jay charan sir that is what's the need of women political participation for economic development it is for uh, kv jay chandran sir which is asked by litan malakar but he is not here i will assure you that i am assuring you that he will mail you or i will mail you uh, you will get your answer through mail now the next question asked by dr uma nomo sudro madam the staff the teaching staff of government degree college dharmanagar she is asking one question to soikot sir dr soikot chatterjee sir that if he is here i would uh, love to hear from him only that is please share two or three latest judgment of sc that may empower women rights so i would put uh, soikot sir on on add on stream good afternoon ankan good afternoon good afternoon sir so this is the question from uma madam to you she is asking that please share two or three latest judgment of supreme court that may empower women rights so please sir i would like to welcome uma madam for her uh, nice question uh, i'd like to cite uh, the verdicts of supreme court uh, in favor of women right uh, one of the case uh, i'd like to uh, refer here that's uh, of lata singh versus state of uttar pradesh uh, lata singh was an adult when she left her family home to be joined in a matrimony with a man from a lower caste her brothers who were unhappy with the alliance filed a missing person report and alleged lata had been abducted this resulted in the arrest of three people from her husband's family 
in order to get the charges dropped lapa singh filed a petition which resulted in the landmark jud judgment by the supreme court that allowed an adult woman the right to marry or live with anyone of her choice the court further ordered that the police initiate criminal action against people who commit violence against those who decide on inter religious or inter caste marriages this is one of a uh, uh, very uh, means uh, prominent uh, or latest verdict of the supreme court uh, which uh, definitely supports the women right there are certain other many many more such uh, decisions of the supreme court in favor of women rights this i uh, spelt out one of them so thank you sir i hope uma madam are you you are satisfied with the reply given by our dr soikot sir it was uh, means very clear to understand his explanation so thank you sir for providing us the knowledge and the scheme and the judgment given by the supreme court so thank you sir for giving us welcome. time valuable welcome. time welcome sir welcome ankur sir thank you sir now we have more questions but we will stick to two questions more that is asked by asked by subroto nath that is does segregation of activities are needed as per the gender and will it be beneficial for empowering the women it is asked for dr k v jayachandran uh, by subroto nath but he is not here to tell you that he will reply soon through mail to me and i will send it to you so that you you will get your answer i would like to read out the question again does segregation of activities are needed as per the gender and will it be beneficial for empowering the women so definitely it will be replied by dr k v jayachandran sir so thank you subroto now the last questions i would say that is asked by vinod robidas at most probably to me i think so that is how a woman can develop her leadership qualities with the help of games and sports so this is the question and very uh, basic in form as in my, uh, as my presentation was not so clear due to the interruption of uh, internet facilities it was the audio and video it was totally means uh, not able to hear or uh, visible also audio visible so i would like to explain here that how one can develop the leadership quality especially the women through sports and games as we all know that games and sports is a such kind of field which is uh, which involves all the faculties of human being it may be mental it may be physical it may be social so you have to put your effort to show your skill or to show your performance you have to be 100% on the field you can't restrict your qualities your capabilities as sports aim at developing the physical capabilities so you can't restrict you have to put 100% and while putting 100% you have to show each and every aspect of your personality that may be physical mental and social and social development leads you to have the better leadership quality because uh, anyway girls are uh, already having certain kind of in their teenagers uh, teen age they are having certain kind of managerial quality that they have flourish during the game situation during the sporting event they develop their leadership because sports is a is an event which which is means used to take place individually as well as in team also and when you are playing in a team you have to cope up with all the adverse conditions developed during the game situation which you have to cope with your through your 
uh, that group cohesion group dynamics the unity among the group that needs the leadership through this kind of activity you can develop your leadership through group cohesion all are interlinked all are harmoniously interlinked without one another you can't develop leadership so for leadership you have to be open up yourself you have to put forward your in, uh, innate qualities and sporting is the exact is the appropriate event to show all the faculties it may be physical mental and social likewise you have you can develop you have to show your uh, intellect you have to show your presence of mind you have to show your uh, uh, common sense while playing so through these activities you can definitely develop your leadership quality so this was my answer <clears throat> later on i will explain uh, everything as my presentation was not so clear but meanwhile i would like to instruct you again please stay tuned as we are going to give you the feedback link during the vote of thanks now with the end of interaction session i would like to request the heart and soul of this program the organizing secretary of this program dr suman adhikari to give away the vote of thanks and through the vote of thanks we will end the session and we will end the whole program here uh, so stay tuned with us i would like to request suman sir thank you dr ankushna honorable dignitary present in the nepal session respected resource person my dear participant on behalf of the organizing committee and also on behalf of the god dignity college of monagar it give me immense pleasure to propose vote of thanks to all the resource person who spare their valuable time to grace this event my heartful thanks also go to dr ankan shina dr shurojit patok dr shoiko charanji for their thought provoking lecture i would also like to extend my gratitude to dr nurul alam choudhury professor kb joychandran for their extremely relevant lecture my deep sense of appreciation and thanks go to all the participants who chose to live with live with us and also make this event a grand success i would also like to thank our principal sir sri gautam dash for encouraging us to organize such kind of event i would also like to thank organizer for choosing this kind of topic which is very relevant in the present time once again i thank you all for being with us in this afternoon have a wonderful day ahead thank you all thank you thank you sir uh, for the vote of thanks and with this we are going to end the uh, national web conference here meanwhile i would like to instruct you that you get you will get the feedback link in your group or the group whatever we have created to for the participants you will get over there also and we have sent the uh, webinar link here also uh to the youtube chat so thank you once again for giving about your time over here and for your patient sharing we will meet again in some other program and some other platform thank you one and all amar to nahi to ठीक है नेट टाइम नहीं बोलो बोलो